Potential side effects for the new treatment include slurred speech, impaired vision, and vomiting. Doyle Redlin for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you'd like. All you have to do is dial in toll-free. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show. Our username is lrn.fm. But you do have to send a contact request first. So do that, and we'll approve you, and you'll be on the list from that point forward. Joining you in studio tonight, it is Ian here. Chris. And Mark. Chris Canwell joining us as a special guest host. Oh, uh, we're going to get in trouble. Yeah, we uh, we got some feedback on you last time, Chris Cantwell. People got upset. How dare we? How dare we allow you on the air? Well, I uh, I understand that uh, some people just can't tolerate my presence, and and that's just such a shame because I think we all had a really good time. So. I thought so. I thought it was a, a great show. <laughs> you're comfortable behind a microphone. Yeah, you're opinionated, and you're not afraid to share it. And I just can't wait until we stumble across one of those topics where we disagree. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, let's jump into something here. Uh, Barry Cooper. Do you know who this is, Chris Cantwell? Barry Cooper. It rings a bell, but no. I don't. Barry Cooper's kind of a friend of uh, Free Talk Live. We've had him on over the years, and uh, he's somebody I think you would probably uh, enjoy maybe uh, for interviewing for your show, which you do a show called Some Garbage Podcast. Yes, I do Some Garbage Podcast. It's not on any sort of regular basis, but if you follow me, you'll get the announcements when we do air them, and it goes out on my YouTube channel, and once I fix my RSS feed, you'll get it from iTunes and stuff like that. Cool. Too. So what's the YouTube channel? Just YouTube curious. channel, just just search Christopher Cantwell. Cool. It's tied to my Google account. Barry Cooper's a former narcotics cop from Texas. Sounds like a swell guy. And uh, <laughs> he didn't do nice things for a long time, but he at one point, probably about a decade ago now, probably more than a decade now, uh, Barry released, nah, I guess it's been about a decade, he released Never Get Busted. He kind of changed sides. He left the side of the police and he went to the side of the peaceful drug consumer and re- literally created a I don't know, hour and a half long DVD with tips of the trade as far as how to avoid getting busted as a cannabis user, someone driving from you know their dealer's house to their to their house with cannabis with them, that kind of thing. You know what what are the the you know the things cops look for? And he outed some of the techniques of the police. There was some controversy within you know some of the advice that he gave. I think there was some nitpicking uh, about you know whether or not what he the, some of the advice he gave was optimal, uh, but we had him on the show. We, we hashed a lot of that stuff out here, and I think he is a, an above-the-board guy. I think he's a really good guy. I'm, I'm glad to have been able to work with Barry. Uh, some of our co-hosts in the past, Sam Dodson, uh, worked directly with Barry when they did Cop Busters. And, of course, Cop Busters, that's Cop Busters with a K if you look for it on uh, YouTube. That was where they set up a grow operation in a rental house growing Christmas trees. And then sent an anonymous tip to the police department to see what would happen as a result of that. And they set up cameras all inside this house and caught the police busting this grow operation of illegally. Christmas trees. They illegally used their cameras. Um, yes. They, <laughs> the police did. Right. They, the police broke the law in order to bust this house that was growing Christmas trees. Yeah, so that was one example. And they, they did another They also got busters. a uh, uh, police... Office, like a, an officer, lieutenant like a lieutenant like or something like that, stealing money. That's correct. Yeah, they left a lunchbox uh, f- with like 40 bucks, uh, an unused crack pipe, and a few other you know detritus items, some trash from some food or whatever. They left that lunchbox at a gas station, called in a tip to the police department about a suspicious uh, item or a suspicious package, and the cop that came out there and rummaged through it uh, took the 40 bucks because when the item was checked into the department— that wasn't on the inventory of what was in the lunchbox. Dun, 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 dun. So. That's 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 disturbing to me because I I really thought that these guys were out looking for our best interests and I I couldn't imagine that they'd be out there stealing and ripping people off. Well, and, the point is, it was so easy for Barry and his crew to you know set these cops up and basically reverse sting the police. So of course 
the police targeted him and his family, and they yeah. came and took drove uh, them out of their town, took their children from them. <laughs> yep. uh, they managed to get their kids back, and when they, as soon as they did that, they left the country and moved to South America. <laughs> I, I think they might be in Mexico right now uh, at the moment. But uh, anyway, so Barry continues to rail against the system. He's become more and more of a radical kind of voluntarist sounding in his uh, rhetoric over the years. And it's been an amazing thing to kind of watch him uh, over all these years and have him back from time to time to update us on what's going on. So once you get that liberty bug in your ear, it just doesn't go away. No doubt. Nevergetbusted.com is Barry's website. This is a blog post posted today there entitled, How to Fight a Speeding Ticket Taught by a Police Sergeant. Barry writes, I don't, although I don't agree with this cop's statement that he was always fair, I do agree his method of beating a traffic ticket will work. It's impossible for a person to be fair when that person is accepting tax money to enforce the unjust laws of the United States. Saying there are fair cops is like saying there were fair Nazis. That said, following or follow this cop's advice and you can beat your next traffic ticket. That's his opinion. I think that uh, whipping out the Nazi (laughs) in that, uh, and then that that sentence is probably going a little far for most folks. Well, he's a former cop. Maybe for most folks don't react so well to it, but I don't think that it's a you know an inaccurate statement. These guys are out threatening people's I mean, lives all the time. He's the one who worked with these characters, Mark. You didn't. You know? It's an issue of degrees. Um, I will not disagree that uh, that the, the police operate very much like a gang, and that the Nazis were very much like a gang. However, I. You know, I don't think I think that when you're comparing one gang to another, you need to understand, yes, there are preferable gangs. And I would for me, police officers in the United States generally are preferable to Nazis. Well, I think the, the, the Latin kings might be, like, preferable to MS-13, but, like, I don't exactly, you know, go through a great deal of effort to differentiate between the two of them. Like, hey, you're a criminal organization and you, you know, kill people, probably uh, not the greatest bunch of guys. Uh, so here's the story from uh, Stan. So this isn't Barry writing this. It's another uh, cop, former cop. I'm a retired sergeant, he says, of police in Victoria for 14 years. I was also a police prosecutor at times, so I know what I'm talking about. I spent half my life in magistrate's courts. It sounds like this is probably Victoria. I'm going to guess, is that Queensland? Where is that, Australia? I, that would be my guess. Uh, magistrate's court during my time in the force. I was only I was only ever a very fair copper, and I'm, a, I'm proud of my time on the job, looking after the interest of Victorians, often to the detriment of my family and health. I never booked a driver for a trifling offense ever. So he goes on to kind of excuse himself, etc., and how the police, he says they need to hang their heads in shame. He says that— There's a Victoria, uh, Texas. Yeah, no, he's writing in a way that a magistrate's court is probably— British Columbia. Brit- is it British Columbia? That There's could be BC, it. yeah. Anyway, he spells force, F-O-R-C-E, with a capital F, which is kind of a weird thing. Anyway, he says, I know how the legal system works, and I know how to beat the system. This is how to do it, and about one, and if about 10% of all drivers booked follow my specific instructions, then the entire system will crash and become unworkable to, the, to that extent. That if the government will have no choice but to stop issuing fines for every type of traffic offense, the whole lot of them, seriously. I don't feel guilty about coming out with this information, as I think it's about time someone stood up for hardworking, civil-minded, law-abiding taxpayers in this country who are being screwed. This is very simple and very basic. The idea is to clog up the system in the traffic camera office and the courts by driving uh, by drivers exercising their rights to remain innocent until proven guilty. This is, sounds a little bit familiar uh, to those of us here in Keene, New Hampshire, who regularly perform don't take a plea deal duties uh, by reaching out to people charged with a variety of crimes, not just uh, speeding and encouraging them to clog the system. So, but this is specifically about speed cameras. This is not about uh, speeding tickets in general, or I, it's not because I thought I saw this headline floating around my social media feeds. Actually. No, I think he's talking about both speeding cameras and just traffic tickets in general. Okay. Uh, Number one, do not accept the alleged offense. There are numerous valid reasons to dispute every single alleged offense. Often the charges are incorrect and the evidence is illegally or incorrectly gathered. We talked about this earlier this week, wherein if you do not... You have to know this, because remember, illegally obtained evidence will happily be entered in as evidence unless you can dispute, know how to dispute that um, the the evidence is legal. Okay, but you don't have to be a court expert to follow this guy's instructions here. Okay. Um, you, You don't have to know all the details and the ins and outs of the system 
what he's pointing out here is that a lot of the times the charges are incorrect. That can just simply mean you read the RSA and you compare the RSA, or the, it, up here in New Hampshire they're called RSAs, uh, the statutes. You read the statutes, you compare what actually happened to the, the, you know, what is supposed to be illegal by statute, and it just doesn't match up. Um, and a lot of times you'll find that the police have done a shoddy job of putting together a case. If you don't take the plea, and instead you go to court, and you get discovery, and you actually see what supposed evidence they have against you. We'll continue with his tips on how to beat a speeding ticket coming up here in moments. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the Tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Hey 
This is Free Talk Live. More on how to beat a speeding ticket, at least according to a former cop. We'll give you the details here. 855 855- 450 free. That's the toll free number brought to you by Pro XPN. Look, privacy matters, but you have to take steps in order to achieve privacy. Uh, Cantwell, for instance, would at some point need to put some blinds on his windows across the street. But, you know, <laughs> you've got to put effort into uh, achieving privacy. Pro- I don't care if the neighbors see me walking around naked. I really. <laughs> I'm but proud see, of it. The difference you know. is the neighbors Wouldn't don't care me. to see you walking around naked. Right. So then they should put some blinds on their windows. <laughs> exactly. Stop looking at my house like creeps. Pro XPN is a way to put some blinds up on the internet, at least, uh, to prevent your internet service provider from seeing what you're doing online. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit, every search term you enter. Uh, you can stop that from happening. Just go and get their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, uh, setup's a little different. Contact their support department. They'll help you out. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you go get the software. When you're ready to upgrade uh, to the premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, and the ability to privately torrent, as well as get past regionally blocked websites, then you can use our discount code. It's FTL20. That's FTL20 to save 20% from the price of the premium account, which, by the way, if you buy the annual plan for the best discount, you'll get it down to $5 a month for this uh, amazing level of privacy protection. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you really have nothing to lose but your privacy. ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits as well. Uh, so go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and don't forget to use promo code FTL20 when you are ready to upgrade to their premium account. I think I actually might switch to them. I, uh, I've i been using uh, PrivateInternetAccess.com. Not familiar. Um, and I'm actually... Uh, uh, an affiliate program with them but the deal that you tell me about is actually better than the one i'm paying there for. you go so and these guys have been really responsive uh they're you know inevitably with enough people signing up for something there's going to be some there's gonna be some hitches and there's gonna be some problems and the times when yeah, they people said 0.2 percent of their customers have problems i saw in a recent <laughs> um you know when they uh, when they've sent emails their support staff has been pretty responsive in my experience, I've been really happy with that. In fact, we've even got direct answers straight from the CEO of the company who happens to be a listener of the show, which is pretty cool. So proxpn.com slash FTL. Back to the steps. According to former uh, cop here, former police sergeant, and it's not really clear where he was a cop, but it's definitely some sort of uh, English-speaking jurisdiction. I'm thinking it might be Australia uh, based on this, were you, were you were saying there's no Victoria think, in Australia? No, I did not say that. Uh, Canada is what I'm guessing. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, continuing on here, he says, number one, don't accept the alleged offense, whether it's a speeding ticket or some sort of traffic ticket. Don't accept it. There are reasons to dispute it. Number two, challenge it. Tell them that you're going to defend the matter. Make them earn their miserable 150 or $200 or whatever. They have to prepare evidence and witnesses. Just the wages for the camera operator, the policeman on the day of court will be more than the actual fine. Because, again, I don't know if this applies where you're listening, but I know that here in New Hampshire, they'll pay police officers overtime. And I think that's pretty typical. Cops get paid more to go in and uh, sit in court and wait to testify. They do that in New York for sure. Yeah, so it costs them. I mean, it's costing them to take you to court. So keep that in mind. Costing you. Well, it's costing you as a taxpayer, that's true. But ultimately, you know, this isn't the federal government we're talking about. The city can't print its own dollars. They have to raise taxes uh, in order to cover these costs eventually. If, if... People were to or do write as more he's speeding suggesting. tickets. If if people, but but if people were to do as he's suggesting, and that is, if ten percent of people who receive tickets were to go ahead and not take the plea deal and clog the system, that would cause a serious backlog of cases. It, I mean, they're not they're not going to be able to build courts fast enough to really deal with that. And yes, the government could expand in theory to deal with that, but at least here in New Hampshire, I can tell you that they'd have a real tough time making that well, happen. In some places, this is going to work. In some places, it isn't. because In most places, this isn't going to work because you won't get 10% of the people to do anything. Well, and if you decide to be the first one, don't forget that there's these things like uh, you know court fees, and they make it very difficult for – they know – that they can't handle people disputing traffic tickets. Sure. So they so build the system against it. They'll make it. you pay the entire fine up front. They'll charge you hundreds of dollars if you lose. Um, they'll, you know, they basically charge you money for having your day in court. They do everything sort of extra constitutionally. The Constitution says 
that you're supposed to get a jury trial on something 20 bucks or more, if I remember correctly. I don't have it sitting right here in front of me, but uh, read it somewhere. And nope, uh, nope, sorry, that doesn't, no, 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 you'll sit in front of our judge, who is in fact a, uh, a magistrate who's a, just a lawyer in town that wants to be a judge, so therefore he's going to find everybody guilty so that he can then get to be a judge because we want judges that find people guilty so we can make the money. I think you're referencing the Seventh Amendment, and, and what it says is uh, in suits at common law. I think those are for uh, civil uh, matters, and they're supposed to be in common law courts. And my understanding is a traffic uh, a traffic court is anything but common law. It's it's basically some administrative uh, garbage where you have uh, you know your 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 driving is a privilege as far as the right. state oh, yeah. is concerned, and and so you have no rights whatsoever. Note how they opt those themselves courts. out of this uh, this thing. <laughs> no? Number Not three. That. He, well, he says that he doesn't think it'll ever get to the point of actually having to be in court, but if so, you know, you're taking the cop off the, the streets for the day, etc. Uh, number three, if a court date is ever set and it does not suit you, do not accept it. Ask for a delay to a time and place that suits you. Well, it's pretty unlikely you'll be able to change the venue, at least in my experience in yeah. the U.S., uh, you know, the state courts. But Have you tried to change the venue from uh, one court to another? Because I think that'd be pretty interesting. You, it'd be you, an interesting, you know, motion to file. You love to get uh, to, to go and fight like traffic tickets and and parking tickets all across the state. You'll drive to Manchester to, which is an hour and a half uh, from Keene to fight a parking ticket. I've Just, never done it in Manchester, but I would. In, okay, necessary. Concord, which yeah, is Concord. certainly an hour. Yeah. Um. So you'll drive an hour to fight it. I just wonder, could you? Motion for a change of venue. Make yeah, the, the parking meter it made drive, drive here. Up to Concord. Drive up to Concord, <laughs> then make the motion to have it moved to Keene so that you can... <laughs> well, you can actually file a motion in abstain. You don't have to be there on site. That's true. Right. Well, I, that's an interesting thing, Mark. You should try it next time you get a parking ticket and let us know how it works out. I, I predict that if you motion to change the venue, you'll have to back <laughs> that up with some sort of evidence of why you can't. Uh, attend in the venue in which it's been scheduled and i've certainly had people and i've tried motioning to recuse a judge and the judge won't recuse himself <laughs> in those instances. i got a judge to recuse herself once in what uh, circumstances? It, it was uh it was in new york they were seizing my vehicles in 2009 when i got my dwi and they uh they have you know asset forfeitures there that the the, the vehicle is the instrumentality of the crime i was charged with a felony and they wanted to seize my vehicle and i basically filed some paperwork uh repeating some some, uh, if you will, like some of the sovereign citizen-y stuff that I had been okay. studying at the time. And the judge recused herself. Wow. Um, <clears throat> what What do you think, uh, you know, do you have any speculation as to if there was one thing you said that would have made that happen or encouraged that to happen? I really, it wasn't explained to me. So what I said was, you know, I don't consent to this. You have no, you have no authority for me to, to uh, hold or seize my property. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. I basically wrote like eight like bullet points and then, yeah. you know, that this is illegitimate, right? Right. And and what was happening though was was they were trying to put me on a civil trial while my criminal case was ongoing. They wanted me to testify to keep my car while they were put threatening me with four and a half years in state prison in a criminal court. And I was like, you're gonna you're gonna put me on trial here, put me on record, and then use this against me in the other court mm -hmm. and put me in prison because I'm not entitled to an attorney in the civil asset forfeiture. We'll come back with more here in moments. You can share your thoughts at eight eight fifty five four fifty free. This former cop is saying it's time to clog the courts. What do you think? Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Talk Live. Bring up anything right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Join us via Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by Bitcoin. In fact, you can go and get hooked up with your very own free Bitcoin wallet by visiting blockchain.com. They've got easy-to-use links there. In fact, so I understand that they're going to be releasing another updated version of the new blockchain wallet. They're going to be ironing out a few bugs that we encountered, uh, Chris, when uh, you and I were at the uh, the booth where a couple people had trouble signing up for a brand new wallet uh, with the blockchain app. But for the most part, it's been working and it's been working pretty well. Uh, so go to blockchain.com, grab yourself your free Bitcoin wallet there. It makes it really easy to access Bitcoin from anywhere. Send and receive money to anyone anywhere in the world for next to zero cost at uh, blockchain.com via Bitcoin, an amazing decentralized internet-based currency that is arguably taking the world by storm. Uh, Dell Computer... Wikipedia, both have recently started taking Bitcoin, which is awesome, and even local businesses all around the country, more so in urban areas. I think you're going to see more popularity for Bitcoin there, uh, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's spreading, and it's worth it for you to take a, look, a closer look. You can learn more over at weusecoins.com as we continue here with a, a, a piece from a former cop, and it seems like he might be in uh, maybe British Columbia or Australia or something like that. He's talking about ways. But what he's saying here, even though he's not from the United States, still applies. He's still in the Western court system, which, uh, you know, they're based on sort of similar common law. Ideas. English common law. Yeah. So uh, he's talking about clogging the courts, which I'm a huge fan of this idea. And I think it's such a powerful approach just that 
finding people who are willing to do this, that's the real challenge. Well, clogging the courts is one thing. I hope he gets to the part where you actually beat the ticket. Because what I've, I've heard so far is him say, clog the courts, clog the courts. But he's, t he's titled it How to Beat the Ticket. I hope that he's going to do that. Because, you know, if you just clog the courts, it doesn't mean that you get out of your speeding ticket. It means that, like, you spent a whole bunch of time in court. It's that's a long term. It's a long-term process for beating the ticket. Once you get enough people together to clog the courts, then all the tickets are beaten. That's the idea. Well, that is his, that's what he's said so far. <laughs> And he's right about that. I mean, the, he's right. If enough people were to clog the courts, they would you'd start seeing tickets drop left and right. General Ian would send out his uh, his army <laughs> in attrition against these courts as best he possibly could. I, uh, I'm not in charge of anyone, but march, I would like to encourage people. March into the maw of the time wasters. <laughs> <laughs> One more time into the breach, gentlemen. <laughs> yes, we'll stand here all day for this traffic ticket for $5 if we must. Charge! <laughs> I uh I I actually just I just I feel a little dirty. I just paid a parking ticket in Keene. In Keene? Yeah, I just paid it. There what? you go. Yeah. Wait a I, minute. It's, you, you it's we'll five get the dollars. Now. I'm like I don't. I'm not gonna go sit around in court and deal with oh, judges. Like I'm no. like here's your five You're the problem, bucks. You not are. the solution. You can't are well. part of the problem, can well. You do realize that, right? I can't that, right? do it. <laughs> what? I think it would be hilarious to have you uh, questioning the parking enforcement officer on the stand. I mean, Garrett just recently, Garrett Ian, who's one of the uh, bloggers at Freekeen.com, he just recently had about a 25-minute long trial for a couple of the parking tickets, actually, where he uh, it was pretty entertaining. I mean, to, to sit there and watch it, the questions that he had for the, uh, the enforcer. I mean, back in Concord when I went and challenged a $10 parking ticket, and I drove all the way to Concord for it, uh, the parking enforcement officer was sitting there in the courthouse for as long as we we were, and we were waiting two hours just for the case to start. So when I got her on the stand, I asked her because you know usually when the bureaucrat goes up on the stand, the uh, the prosecutor will ask them questions. How long have you been uh, with the parking enforcement department? And uh, you know they'll ask them questions about their job. So I asked her some questions about her job, and I said, well. If you weren't uh, assigned to, are you on duty today? Are you getting paid to to be here? Oh yes, yeah, I'm on duty. And I asked her if she was getting paid overtime because I always knew cops get overtime, but apparently she was not. She answered that she was not getting paid overtime, which is interesting. And I said, if you uh, weren't supposed to be in this courthouse, would you be out on the streets enforcing uh, the parking ordinances? She said, yep, that's what I would be doing. And I said, well, how many tickets would you have written in a two-hour time frame if you were out on the streets? Which, you know, what's your average? What do you think it would be? A ballpark it. And I think she said something like 20. Yeah. So to me... To save 20 people from getting a parking ticket by virtue of the fact that I'm just in there, you know, making it so they have to spend two hours of this lady's time sitting in a court uh, courtroom. To me, that was just such a just a wonderful moment. Throw yourself on the hand grenade, Cantwell. <laughs> You're saving lives. I and I and I can appreciate that, and I'm glad that there are people who who go out and do that. And and in the future, probably I'm. It's probably not the last ticket that I'm going to get. Not. in not. Right. Now, was this <laughs> the one that Josie Wales had put up on Facebook? She put some sort of picture up. Was that yours or no? Hers? She she got her own ticket. I got I got a ticket the day that Rich got released. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was and of course you know I'm I'm uh, held up in a courtroom waiting for. To to find out if they are going to free my friend from his cage and this goes on for more than two hours right so i uh i had put i had maxed out the meter but of course the the hearing waiting for that to happen uh took longer than two hours and so i wound up with a five dollar parking ticket and i went out there and i was just like you're gonna be effing kidding me <laughs> and i and then and but then i had to register my car and i was like is this thing gonna jam up my registration mm. and i just and i just paid them but i'm sure i'll get another ticket and you will see the youtube video of me needling the parking oh, enforcer. Oh, it'll be hilarious. It'll happen, folks. This kind of appeasement Don't can't tease. Well this is how Hitler took over, you know. <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, you know, the fact is, uh, uh, Cantwell, you could have told Ian that you cheated on him with his wife. He wouldn't have bothered him in the least. <laughs> you paid a parking ticket? You have hurt this man to his soul. No, he hasn't hurt me at all. Do I look it like I'm It pains hurt? him. Do I look like I'm in pain? Yeah, no. I can tell you, you gave me a hell of a lot more trouble about paying my parking ticket than you did him. Number four, when they uh, so the first he says you should ask for an extension basically on the court date, which normally you can do. Typically the courts will give you an extension, and of, of course with a parking ticket that gives or not a parking ticket, but with like a speeding ticket, a fairly high dollar or what could be a high dollar item that does put off the amount of time that you know extends the amount of time you have to ultimately pay. If you are ultimately sentenced and found guilty and have to pay this fine. If you know if you can delay the trial another three months, it gives you a little bit more time to uh, to deal with that. 
a lot of people aren't a lot of people who get tickets aren't in the best financial of uh, uh, strata right I guess you could exactly say. And number, they love to take advantage of that number four when they reset the date delay it as often as possible keep pleading not guilty all through the process you have every right to be sick or to go for an adjournment if the day does not suit any legitimate reason for when example you're sick, I'm, I'm interested in this because you know they'll set this court date a month in advance mm-hmm. I have no idea if I'm going to come down with malaria between now and then so I how do you what do you do when you're sick uh, you would, um, you know, motion the court, and, then, and he even says, what does "Call that mean? in, call in." Okay. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know what level of success that would have. It's an interesting approach. I suspect um, that would depend on where you are. I mean, I, I was telling you before the show, like I just dealt with this thing in New York that they were coming after me for a, a speeding ticket from 16 years ago, yeah. from 1998. They're like, oh, we <laughs> dug this up. And I'm like, I've been a New Hampshire resident for two years. And before I fled your empire, I paid you thousands of dollars to get your hooks out it's of never me. never enough. I'm pretty Once sure you- that a, a speeding ticket from 16 years ago is that you can actually just sort of uh, motion that it be tossed out. I but- did. And and what what they said t- it was ridiculous because they wanted me to they said I had to show up in court because it was a speeding ticket I see. Mm-hmm. and so I was like uh, I, and I, I called them and I'm like you're crazy you're gonna throw me in prison if I drive there I live in New Hampshire <laughs> you suspend my license you send an, uh, a letter apparently to an address that I don't live at anymore I've informed the Department of Motor Vehicle here where I live nobody decides to send me a letter up here and notify me that that you're suspending my driver's license and now you're telling me that I can't even get a new ID in Keene because you have a 16 year old speeding ticket in New York and I sent right because they can suspend your when they suspend your license it basically results in you being suspended everywhere else not exactly so what happens is like if if I was suspended in New York and had a New York license then I'm suspended everywhere right oh really if I'm suspended in New York and I have a New Hampshire license then what happens is uh, at first nothing happens to me here right it's only a problem in New York and so I could drive in all 49 states except New York and it wouldn't be a problem until New Hampshire when I went to the DMV then I went to change my address when I moved across the street here, right? So they tell me, oh, this is the PDPS problem report. It's the national system. And they told me they're going to suspend my license here in, yes. in 30 days yep. now that they found out and notified me. Toll free number 855 450 free. So, anyway, this uh, cop says, former cop says, you know, keep putting this thing off if you can. For example, you may have pressing family or work commitments which prevent you from attending a particular court on a particular day. I don't know how far you can push that. You know, you can get one continuance pretty easily, but the rest of them you're going to have to show some evidence, I think. We're coming up. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760.
This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, mothers across the nation invented a new drug to worry about, confirming that the completely fictitious new substance was appearing in schoolyards across the nation and is easily created from simple household products like sugar, window cleaner, and petroleum jelly. Calling the totally made-up narcotic scramp, mothers in desperate need of something to fret over deluded themselves into constantly agonizing over the widespread drug epidemic that exists solely in their minds. My son sits in his room for hours and hours. It must be scram. He's a scram pet. I bet they'll figure out how to scramp with this too. In other news, a man confidently strides through a beaded curtain without parting it. A father takes a picture of his daughter every day from birth until he abandons his family. And the same homeless man is always begging for change on the same United flight. Stalled contract negotiations have prevented me from reviewing any more news until I receive a co-producer credit. But for more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, just get your shopping taken care of over at shop.freetalklive.com. You can enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. And then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the purchase, whatever your purchase happens to be. And there's so many different categories, so many products, free Super Saver shipping available, I think, on, pro- on purchases over $35 for a whole lot of the products there. You know Amazon. You know there are great uh, deals and huge selection. The reviews, of course, are very helpful. So go and get your shopping done and help Free Talk Live at the same time by going to shop dot freetalklive.com back to the story here from nevergetbusted.com and you decide and I've, I've been quibbling with some of the points here that this former cop from victoria still not sure which victoria uh, but 14 year veteran sergeant of the police there named stan saying that he's giving us a few points here on how to get out of a speeding ticket he recommends clogging the courts which i'm a big fan of that idea he says if only 10 percent would do what he is suggesting, that the tickets would just start getting thrown out and maybe not even written in the first place. So we'll continue here with him. Uh, He's saying to basically try to delay the trial for as long as possible through continuances. Number five, if it ever actually gets to court, which is unlikely if everyone does this, that's the problem, not everyone's going to do it. But if 10% were to do it, it would be a significant burden on the courts, and I do agree with him that if 10% were to do it, That would be probably enough to really put a stop to a lot of this nonsense. Uh, He says that if it ever ever actually gets to court and you are unwell that day, ring the court in the morning and tell them you cannot make it as you are sick. A camera operator and a police prosecutor will already be at court and will be greatly inconvenienced by having to come back another day. The whole time this is going on, the amount of paperwork involved at the uh, traffic camera office is huge. Uh, Several staffs are involved and rapidly becomes very costly, probably running into the thousands. 
Uh, he goes on. Number six, the court system is then placed under such a massive load by people who wanted their day in court that it simply will not be able to cope unless they open up about another 50 magistrates' courts. And this is obviously going to cost the government a lot more than any revenue raised. If all the above uh, fails, which is a hugely unlikely, and you actually go to court and get convicted, you have right of appeal. Make sure you appeal the conviction. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to see what happens. They're not going to spend millions chasing hundreds. Uh, the only thing with the appeal is then you have to spend more money usually. There's, uh, at least here in New Hampshire, it's like $200 to file an appeal. Um, and so, you know, the average person isn't going to want to go through any of this. You know, they're not going to want to go through step one of not even taking the plea deal in the first place when, as Cantwell pointed out, if the cost seems low enough, obviously the cost of their time is valuable, so most people will just go ahead and pay the fine. But, of course, that is what has created the problem in the first place. But it's 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 geared to create this situation, right? I mean, the, 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 tech, the, I'm sorry, the tickets are priced in such a fashion that they know it's not worth your time to show up. So, right. I mean, the, if, 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 is that the end of the thing, or does he actually get to the part where That's you actually it, man. beat the I mean, There's point so, seven and eight. Point seven and eight is uh, tell everyone you know, pass this on, and always remember you're innocent until proven guilty, and there's a very high probability the evidence used to against you is wrong. You have every right to challenge the alleged offense, so use the courts a lot. That's I'm, why they exist. I'm, I'm a little frustrated with this article, frankly, because he's telling you how to, you, hey, this is a foolproof way to beat a speeding ticket. Well, it's not. No, it's not. It's it's it, 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 it's advising people to clog up the courts, which of course we do in, in other things. If we were down at... Uh, he's not wrong, though. If, if we I were mean, down generally. at Superior Talk, if we were down at Superior Court saying, don't plead plead not guilty, and therefore you will be found not guilty, we'd be lying to people, That's correct. right? That would be a lie. And this guy's like, how to beat a ticket. Well, no, this is not how you beat a ticket. This is how he hopes to, you know, bring this system to a grinding halt and this is how you drag your feet right um, and i don't think it's a bad idea to drag your feet necessarily in these circumstances but uh, there's evidence to show that he's right though. it's a I mean, misleading like, uh, headline for a reason to get you to read it it's good and and i'm glad it's, it's i totally agree generally with his thrust i don't necessarily agree that you should try to continue the case five times i think that eventually the judge is going to get sick of that and we'll, you wouldn't get away with that in traffic court in New York. I'll yeah, tell you this: no and there's no way that you're going to call up and get a get a continuance by phone. They're, I agree they're not with that. Do too. that in most places. So wherever it is that he is, I mean, maybe they got some really friendly people extorting money from you that are like, "Oh yeah, sure, no problem. We'll just let you go another day." Like, yeah. You know, I don't know where this is, but it's nowhere that I've ever lived. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the whole calling in on the day of that uh, your mileage may vary, but generally. His well, I strategy think that is no, good. I think he's right. I think that you can be sick on the day of. You can be, but I tend to also agree with Cantwell that they're just going to say, well, screw you. Yeah. You're going quickly... to get a default conviction yeah. in New York, if anyway. Like, if you if you have a traffic court date and you it don't might... show up, they will just convict you in yeah. absentia and send you a bill. And the deal, yeah, right. The day is done. It's over. You had your chance to show up. You didn't make it. I mean, they don't care if it's a snow a snow day. You know, they're, they're there. I've gone down. I remember in uh, the winter, in the middle of dead of winter in New Hampshire, just on some of the heaviest snow days out there, thinking, ah, oh, you know, a long time ago, oh, they'll never, I mean, they'll close down for the day. I mean, it's just treacherous out here. There's no way they'll they'll be open. No business would be open today. But the court, man, they're open. They're do, they're ready for business, as they call it. They love to call what they do business there at the court, as though it's somehow in any way related to what actual business is, which is of course human beings interacting with one another on a consensual basis. Uh, but man, they were open bright and early, 8 a.m. right on time. Didn't matter about the you know heaping piles of snow that had fallen uh, the night before. But I happen to wonder you know in a situation like that in new hampshire would you have more success with the calling in sick thing because i have seen them accept someone call in late i've seen that happen i've been mm. in court where you know they'll call somebody's name and then one of the court clerks or the pro you know prosecutor or somebody will say something like oh he called in he's running late and then they'll take that case and they'll you know they'll put it at the end of the docket uh, for the morning. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect uh, this might work in certain places. You know, yeah. if you're living in a small town, USA, you know, sort of a thing, uh, perhaps, you know, but well, I, I. Only I, the I, first time, though. I mean, you're going to quickly get the Ian hat. Um, yeah, that's all of the sick guys <laughs> right here again. Right? Oh, yeah, this is your second ticket, and you're, you've played the same game twice now. Okay, five continuances. Yeah. It's now a year and a half after, you know, your second ticket. You did this the first time, too. Your that's name is point. now Ian Freeman. And yeah. you suck. You know, like yeah. they're going to hate you.
And there are there's a lot of different situations well, where you, you anyway can, for challenging you know, the ticket. Time time can benefit you in a lot of ways. I started to tell the story of you know I've got these 16 year old uh, speeding ticket and and unlicensed ticket in New York. And if I had gone and just cooperated with them at the moment, I don't even remember getting these tickets. For all yeah. I know, this is a case of identity theft. But in in this instance, you know, this was uh, you know in in 1998, and now they're coming after me for it in 2014. And what they ended up actually doing was allowing me to send somebody there as my agent, and I ended up pleading guilty to two charges of jaywalking, which mm. has nothing to do with speeding or driving without a license. A lower fine. This is justice. In a in the halls of justice, you, they gave you the opportunity to plead out to jaywalking for speeding. Because they knew they knew full well that, like, look, it's a it's a 16-year-old ticket. A, a cop in, I think, Nassau County, I think, does like a 20-year stint, right? So it's like there's, yeah. the cop probably isn't How even on the force anymore. In? How are you going to—I don't remember this traffic stop. I know he's had a lot more traffic stops <laughs> than I have in the last 16 years, even if he is still on the force to come in and identify me. It's just ridiculous. They know that it's not going to happen. They also know that I'm in New Hampshire. Sure. And they're like, okay, we can extract 260 bucks from this guy and call, call him a jaywalker. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just, I just find it so funny. But yeah, in that case, if I had gone and pled guilty and done exactly what they wanted me to do, you know, 16 years ago, then what would have happened is I'd have ended up, uh, you know, with uh, points on my license and insurance right. and everything else. So there's a lot of, there, there can be benefits in slow walking the system. So uh, just a little bit more here, and of course your calls are welcome. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But generally, I mean, while we might quibble on the details of how much you can delay something and the tactics you might use for doing that, generally taking things to trial does clog the system. And if enough people did do it, and I think 5% of tickets would be enough to cause a real problem. I mean, because right now, I don't know about where you live, but I know that in New Hampshire the courts are clogged. They're already they're already loaded up, and it was a f only a few years ago that their budget was so thin they had to start taking furlough days. The courts would take one furlough, an unpaid furlough day every month, so all their employees couldn't show up on that Friday, and there was no cases scheduled, etc. So um, you know they're already kind of teetering on the brink of failure, like complete and total lockdown, as like far the as, state free so frequently does. <laughs> yeah, and so it would not take that much to sort of push it over the brink. Uh, by people refusing to take a plea deal on little stuff like parking tickets. And there's no better thing to do it on because it's very low risk. I mean, if you, at least in New Hampshire, if you get convicted of a parking ticket after you go to a trial and spend, you know, they spend an hour trying to convict you of this thing, it's still five bucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they don't add on any extra yep. fees on a That's parking ticket. That's just funny is what yeah. that is. But so. I have to ask myself, you're, you're right, how many hours do you spend fighting this thing? And then you got to forget how much, you can't forget how much real estate does this parking t t ticket take up in your mind. Not much. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More coming up. You can share your story if you've been involved in clogging the system. And, of course, you can bring up whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Look, kid, when guys like us walk into a facility in the morning, we can smell a problem. No one needs to hand us a work order. We already know it. Today, for instance, we need a new gearbox, six globe valves, and a dozen ballasts. And when I smell a problem, Granger smells that I smell a problem. They help me keep this place up and running. Now that's the kind of smell I like. The sweet smell of success. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.92 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,303 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $584. Politico reports the number of Americans who approve of their own representative in Congress has reached an all-time low, according to a new poll released on Tuesday. In a Washington Post ABC News poll, 51% of Americans said they disapprove of the way their own representative in Congress is handling his or her job. 41% approve of how their members handle his or her work, the lowest approval rating that the Washington Post and ABC News has ever found. This is the first time in 25 years that the number of Americans who disapprove of their own member of Congress has risen to more than 50%. Still, Democrats are seeing more favorable ratings than Republicans. Of those polled, 49% said they have a favorable impression of the Democratic Party, while only 35% answered the same for the GOP. These results come on the same day that voters in Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, and Washington will be casting ballots for midterm election primaries. On June 15th, a Gallup poll found that only 15% of Americans approve of the way that Congress as a whole is handling its job, with a plurality answering that the solution for fixing the legislative branch would be to clear the house. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Intercept reports nearly half of the people on the U.S. government's widely shared database of terrorist suspects are not connected to any known terrorist group, according to a classified government document obtained by The Intercept. Of the 680,000 people caught up in the government's terrorist screening database, a watch list of known or suspected terrorists that is shared with local law enforcement agencies, private contractors, and foreign governments, more than 40% are described by the government as having no recognized terrorist group affiliation. That category, 280,000 people, dwarfs the number of watch-listed people who are suspected with having ties of Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and Hezbollah combined. The documents obtained from a source in the intelligence community also revealed that the Obama administration has provided over an unprecedented expansion of the terrorist screening system. Since taking office, Obama has boosted the number of people on the no-fly list more than tenfold to an all-time high of 47,000 people, surpassing the number of people barred from flying under George W. Bush. David Gomez, a former senior FBI special agent, says, If everything is terrorism, then nothing is terrorism. The classified documents were prepared by the National Counterterrorism Center, the lead agency for tracking individuals with suspected links to international terrorism. It was stamped secret and no foreign, indicating that they are not to be shared with foreign governments. They offer the most complete numerical picture of the watch-listed system to date. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to take Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty, while simultaneously continuing to create daily liberty media. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. 
Antiwar.com reports the Israeli government has withdrawn its ground troops and the new ceasefire has taken effect and seems to be holding. So far, all cross-border attacks have been halted by both sides. The 72-hour truce opens up a window for negotiations on a peace settlement and while Israel won't meet directly with the Palestinians on the matter, the Egyptian junta has agreed to act as mediator, ferrying messages back and forth between the two sides until a pact is reached. The return of calm, whether temporary or not, allows hundreds of thousands of displaced Gazans to return to their homes, or at least to the rubble that used to be their homes before the intense Israeli bombardment began. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Delighted health insurance executives gather in an outdoor coliseum to watch a patient battle cancer. And a self-conscious flasher is fully clothed under his trench coat. This is the Onion Week in Review. While stressing that they would absolutely never consider doing anything of the sort, German leaders quietly admitted this week that they were pretty sure they could carry out another Holocaust if they ever truly wanted to. Quickly noting that the Holocaust was an atrocity that should never be repeated, no matter how easy it would be to do so, almost all members of the German parliament discreetly conceded that with their country's dominance of Eurozone GDP, pulling off the unthinkable genocide would not be the least bit difficult. I'm just saying, hypothetically, that we very easily could do it. I mean, we definitely have the infrastructure, and the concentration camps are still standing. In other news, a so-called Christian has an erection. A new study finds more children are growing up in single-parent households. And a real-life Nancy Drew traces the source of her HPV. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour. You can take control here. Bring up whatever's on your mind. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. First hour, we were talking about uh, speeding tickets. And one cop, a former cop, says he's got a foolproof method to, uh, to beat speeding tickets, which was somewhat misleading. Uh, because really, it's a more of a long-term strategy. That's what not taking the plea deal is. It's a it's a long-term strategy that requires multiple people to participate in order for it to be maximum successful. Um, the idea being, of course, if you're given some sort of speeding ticket, parking ticket, whatever kind of non-violent crime, alleged crime, possession of marijuana, that you don't take the plea deal. And this is something that we've been advocating or I've been advocating on this program for a long time, number of years here on Free Talk Live. So it's nice to see the idea cropping up in other circles. In this case, Barry That's Cooper. why you're being so kind to this guy that basically had this big fat lie of a headline. <laughs> well, Barry Cooper, I think, wrote the headline, actually. And it is how to fight a speeding ticket to some extent. No, it's extent. how to beat speeding tickets. Now, the title does say there how to beat a... How to beat, how to fight, how to fight a, a speeding, speeding ticket, ticket, not how to beat it, right? So, yeah. all right, so this is how to fight a speeding ticket. It doesn't say that you're going to win. Of course not. You know, it says this is how you spend an extraordinary amount of time clogging up the court system, hopefully, so that other people will possibly do it. And well, if not, evidence. then you will thereby get uh, convicted and spend a bunch of money and a bunch of time uh, feeding There's the state. There's evidence to suggest that this has some ex, uh, some success. And what I mean by that is that uh, there's been folks who've been who've gone down to the police department and they have seen, or the parking department, I guess, and they've seen people and have heard from people who've said that they have gone down to challenge their parking ticket and have had it dismissed out of hand. Um, and I and that you know those who those of us who do Robin Hooding here in Keene, New Hampshire, which is risk rescuing people from getting parking tickets in the first place by putting coins in expired meters prior to the arrival of said parking enforcer, uh, those of us who participate in this would like to believe that the reason why they are going ahead and dropping charges for people is because enough people are challenging them to where they don't really want to spend the time. To try to convict these people that if it's a free stater or liberty activist in the area, they'll go ahead and go through with the trial right, just to try to teach us a lesson. But if it's an average person they don't recognize going in to challenge the, the, the parking ticket, they may not actually end up going to trial. Well, what happened to me was uh, I decided to fight a parking ticket. This, this was, was, what, two, three years ago? No, this was many. This was several years okay, ago. Several years. Um, and... 
you know, nothing happened. They dropped it against me. I wrote a blog post for Freekeen. I think the only blog post I have ever written for Freekeen.com. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as so a guest people, blogger, you're not actually a blogger there. I think it, I think I certainly was at one point a blogger Were at Freekeen.com. Okay, it was, was very a long early time on. Ago. Yes, but <laughs> uh, you know, you and I decided that it is probably best for everybody if I wasn't. Okay. So. Um, yeah, and then the next time, so I wrote a blog. Hey, you don't have to pay those things. Just fight them in court, and then they'll drop the charges. Why would they take a $5 fee to court? And I got some flack about it. You know, some friends are like, you shouldn't do that. You'll destroy the system. You know, that kind of thing. Right? You know, like, uh, yeah, oh, what do you forbid. think I'm here for? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So um, then I, uh, you know, the next time I got a parking ticket, you can better believe they took me to court. They actually asked me for a continuance, and I said, sure, I'll give you a continuance, because otherwise they would have had to drop it. But I'm like, sure, I'll do that. And then, you know, they took me in there. They wouldn't let me say anything. Everything's an objection, you know, mm -hmm. and it was really uh, really kind of uh, funny. But as a result, uh, you know, their, their little laws say that I may not allow anyone, allow, uh, you know, whatever. There's a several words uh, that they said allow um you know, help or facilitate somebody to uh, park, use my vehicle to park into a uh, in, in a parking spot illegally. So I put a note in the vehicle. It says that I do not allow, facilitate, or um, you know, permit you to park illegally in my, in this vehicle, even if I borrow it, even if you borrow it from me. So therefore, then I can bring in this piece of paper that I have notarized from 2009 mm -hmm. or whatever, um, and not notarized but uh, witnessed in 2009. I can say, look, I had this piece of paper in my vehicle. I did not permit them to park in that i am not responsible for mm. the parking you must prove that i parked that vehicle in that spot go ahead and prove it now please but it hasn't you haven't gotten a ticket since never then? I, well, I i got one and i paid it and then you were complaining oh, i can't believe you you are destroying Traitor. liberty <laughs> i'm like you know what five bucks i just don't care anymore let's man. go to robert he's in bellows falls and that's how they get you mark edge robert you're on the air on free talk live hey uh, ian remember we tried that this year with the key court there, I it was a really bad snowy day out. You were on my way up to come get me, and you know, I called the courthouse and I said, "Are you going to be open today?" It's a really real bad, bad storm out, and they said, "Well, we're open, you know, every day." Mm -hmm. And they get the you know, I called back about twenty minutes after that, and you know, I said, uh, you know. Uh, I was still going to be open to go to court today. And, and they said, oh, we didn't even know you were coming. We thought you weren't coming to court today. Interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, you know? I would look at trying to cancel one's, uh, you know, day of court. I would... You know, try to make that telephone call. I don't see any reason not to just keep on put kicking the can down the road as far as these uh, um, these charges well, go. Well, one reason to not do it, if you're not dealing with just a piddly ticket, is because you'll be on bail conditions for a longer period of time. If you've been yeah. arrested for something, yeah, that's a reason. That's a reason to, that you do want to go to trial relatively quickly. Uh, you know, so that's something. But Robert, so what you're saying is that uh, when you called, they thought you weren't going to come in because you'd already called them once, asking about the times or asking if they were open. They presumed you were I don't, even, I don't even know. I don't even know how they got the impression that I wasn't going. It sounds I, like I they jumped to the conclusion. Oh. I mean, they they figured you'd call to ask if they were open. Maybe they just jumped to the conclusion that you weren't. Did you come give in. your name uh, when you called the first time? Absolutely. Okay, Robert. Absolutely. Anything else you want to share tonight? Yeah, the, the, the last bit of part of this I want to share is that you know uh, I uh, you know signed up to get a public public uh, public defender. And, you know, of course, two days into this thing, I changed my mind and I hired an attorney. Skip forward about eight months later, I get a bill from, uh, you know, the uh, Department of... of, uh, of uh, Ripping people off? Yeah, exactly. Public they defender. Bill right box. Well, now, wait a minute. Did you ever even meet with the public defender? Did they ever provide you no. with any service? I never, I didn't, I don't even know the guy. Never met him or anything. And they sent me a bill for eight hundred bucks. Wow! Just because you signed the form saying you consented to the public defender. Thanks for the call, Robert. I appreciate hearing from you. Imagine that. I mean, government taking money from you without providing a service. I mean, that's yeah. unheard of. And the service. I mean, you know, God has blessed the public defenders who really do give it their best. I believe those people exist out there. You know, they're trying inside a really bad system, trying their their best to help 
a large group of people that they can only give so much help to because of you know when they first start perhaps i think those guys get burned out real quick and are like forget this the incentives uh, are just, you know, all max- mixed up for public defenders. And, you know, their incentive is to not work, to look like a lawyer and, um, you know, just tell people things in order to get them to leave them alone. Well, but to be, you know, to to give them credit, I guess, to some of them that deserve credit yeah. where credit is due. Uh, for instance, Rich Paul, our friend who is in jail now, uh, I thought his public defender did a decent job. Uh, with his case most recently with the violation of probation. I thought his argu- ar- the things he was arguing in court were, were pretty well done. It looks like he'd done some research. He didn't just like, you know, ignore the case until the last moment or anything like I'm that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you there. I, I thought that uh it, it, it did appear to me that he was paying attention and, and knew what was uh the details of the case were and was familiar with the law and, and actually like made an effort. Whereas, you know, I've dealt with public defenders in new york where the, you know, it's all it is is slow walking you to a plea deal yep. it's it's nothing other than that but that's what a lot of private attorneys do i mean of i've course, seen private yeah. attorney after private attorney charge somebody th- you know two three thousand dollars to hold their hand right through the plea deal process and act like they've done them a favor oh yeah the, the last time i got arrested i mean it was it was exactly that he's like hey just accept this deal and i was like you know that i've been <laughs> through the system before right like <laughs> i'm not falling for this where did i pay you five thousand dollars for to ruin my life? I don't think so. Exactly. So we'll come back with more. Share your thoughts here. Coming up, another court-related, or not really court, I guess, but sort of legal-ish thing. The the saga of Zen Magnets, one of our sponsors. They are going to it all the way to the end to defend your freedom to have magnets. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features for free. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. It's an agency for one of Asia's largest and most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year from 40 countries. It's in Bangkok. They do major medical. The largest single reason for U.S. bankruptcies? Major medical. Bills. They do heart, pa- heart bypass, heart valve replacement, many other surgeries. Um, those are $120,000 to $150,000 in the U.S. And it equals the price of many homes. It's 25000 to 30000 in Thailand. Hmm. Now, obviously, that's not an amount to sneeze at. But when you start thinking about the uh, the costs of insuring a family for a second, it can cost $2,000, uh, $1,500 to $2,500 a year to insure your family. When you start looking at those costs, that's a year to year and a half's worth of insurance that, uh, that you know, the hard bypass. Hold on, it can cost sure. you 1500 a year to insure a family? As that little low. as 1500 No, Per 15, year? Um, as little as 1500 per year. That's like two people. To get into with to get insurance? catastrophic. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. You know, I don't know what Obamacare has done. I thought insurance to... costs way more than fifteen hundred dollars a year. That's did I say a seems year? Really? No, low. no, I said a month. No, I'm sorry, you, you said, did say you a said year. year. That's I why I kept asking month. you yeah. a year, yeah. okay. a year. That Terribly sorry. <laughs> a month. <laughs> okay, fifteen hundred dollars a that month. That sounds more like it. Okay, sorry, I got those numbers wrong. Excuse me, but um, you know, if you decide to just go it with no insurance at all and just pay for the problems when you have them. This could really be a solution for mm. you with major medical. Most people, that's what they're concerned about, major medical problems. Um, cancer, they can treat it just like they treat it here. These are you know, clean, modern, large hospitals where you're treated well. Asia runlikehellguide.com. Go check it out for yourself. Take a look at the pricing. I was stunned. Um, it changed my whole paradigm on what I believed one could do. Asia runlikehellguide.com. All right, cool. Let's continue here. Matt's in Jersey City, New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Matt. Hello? Hey, you're on the air. Hi. Hey, go ahead with your thoughts. I just want to say uh, I listen every day. I'm a pretty new listener, and I really love the show. Thanks. Uh, I, I always identified with the non-aggression principle. I just never realized that it was called NAP until I heard your show. Um <laughs> I wanted to talk about the fact that you pointed out, I I forget who pointed it out, but uh, 20 tickets were not issued because you took uh, your your ticket to court. Yeah, you're talking about the parking ticket uh, trial. This was the Concord, New Hampshire, a few years ago where I took a $10 parking ticket to uh, to court and, of course, spent two hours in the car just driving there to uh, driving there and back. And who knows how much your time is worth per hour, how much money in gas. Um, I don't probably I, I can charge people like 50, 60 bucks an hour for audio production work. Um, so spending time doing that and then, yeah, getting that satisfaction of knowing that I helped save 20, uh, 20 people from getting parking tickets that morning, just it just warmed my heart. Well, I don't think your heart should be so warm. I mean, there was another person out on the street giving tickets that day. 
It wasn't as if they only have one parking enforcement person. Well, there may or may not have been another person out. Uh, you know, in places like right. Keene, New Hampshire, uh, if you've got one parking officer on, in you know, they may only have one officer on at any, any given uh, point in time. Whether they would schedule the other one during the time when the the one is in court is another question. But regardless. They certainly couldn't put them both out on the streets at that time. So the woman would have been, she had told me in court, the parking enforcer, she would have been on the streets had she not was been she sitting the in the Was she the only person? Was that a question that you had asked? Was she the only person? No, I didn't ask that, that question. Available at that point in time. But even if there was a second person who was out there, then that would still be one fewer of them on the streets. In theory, sure, but I mean, in a lot of cases, I think I, I take the guy's point though that he's saying that look, the state will replace these people. Right? Well, in a place and, like New York City, it's not going to make a warm. difference. Right. right? There's going there's probably fifteen hundred traffic officers on the streets there, right. and that's right. not going to make a difference. But in a place like Keene, New Hampshire, where there are two parking enforcement officers in right. Concord, I don't imagine has more than four uh, or five or something like that. You know, you can really yeah. have an impact. Yeah, certainly. And if it was happening on a regular basis that, you know, you've got both of these parking yes. officers and now there's now we've got, you know, five different uh, uh, traffic parking ticket trials. Well, obviously, you know, you can you can drain those resources rather rapidly in a place like Keene, whereas, yeah, in New York, it's just they'll just hire more people to do it. Again, numbers matter. And that's why the idea of migrating people for liberty, uh, the Free State Project, Shire Society, these are ideas of drawing people here to New Hampshire so we can get active together. Fact is, numbers make a huge difference. And when the numbers of the status is similar you know at least the numbers of the police are similar to the numbers of the activists that starts to become a real game changer i mean you get a situation like right now on a manchester where they have more people i think more activists are coming out to the dui checkpoints that are happening out there uh than the police have out at the dui checkpoint and you know you're turning the tables with that kind of with those kind of numbers. Certainly, when when you come to a place like this and you can actually rival the forces of the government agents in in question at any you know particular turn, uh, there's there's a lot to be said about that. And that's one of the things that I love about being here. Certainly, that you know we can actually like identify who all the police officers are yep. here in Keene. Whereas to try to do that in you know Manhattan is just it's just it's simply impossible. not going it. to happen. Go ahead, Matt. I got it. Um, that makes a lot more sense now that you put it into context. Thank you. Anything um, else you want to share tonight? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I would. I think that a big way to fight and uh, and change the tide is to vote with your dollars. And um, I understand you guys have your your affiliates and your you have your sponsors, but how do you fight by voting with your dollar? What do you want to fight exactly? I'm not real clear. Big agra. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry, um, any sort of military industrial complex, anything that you guys talk about. Well, Mark, you do you the local board to... thing, right? You get the local foods and things. We grow a lot of our own food. Don't I you have buy a... the beef too mm -hmm. locally. So... Yeah. I, yes, uh, Wonderful. Beef, beef we uh, do at home. We do pigs, but I I really don't think that does anything. I think that's a preference. Um, I like. The idea of uh, having knowing where my food um, comes from, I like the idea of knowing, you know, how my the animals that I eat have been treated. Because um, I mean, I, it, as far as I'm concerned, pigs in this country are, are tortured. When you go and you get a pork chop out someplace else, you're the animal that you're eating has been tortured, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I mean, I want to see these animals treated better. I don't know that you're that one, you know, the the big agra and um, that, that one can do anything. I think you're you're really talking about the drop in the bucket at that point. I mean, if you if you think that uh, you know taking your your parking ticket and fighting a parking ticket is a drop in a bucket, when you decide to uh, not purchase your pork chop um, from you know Smithfield Farms or whatever, but instead to grow it on your own property, yeah, they don't miss me. I don't think. Yeah, but it does add up, right? I mean, if, if enough if you, people... Adds up ahead. to what? Uh, go ahead, Matt. Sorry, I was just going to say, what if you were to, say, support a local farm like you're doing? You, you don't actually... I mean, you do raise your own animals, but you support your local farms. That's... Yeah, I support, my, I support local farms, too. I mean, it may be a drop in the bucket to ConAgra or whoever, Mark, but to the local farmer, that's a new customer, and it makes probably a big difference for them. Thanks for the call, Matt. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-3. Then why don't you support them? I don't really care. I'm right. frozen food. That's what More it comes on the down way to. here in moments, you can take control of the airways. But there's no doubt that people boycotting can have an effect. I mean, look, Apple put the Bitcoin apps back in their store. More coming up. Free Talk Live. 
We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. talk live we invite you to bring up whatever you want we're talking about kind of overall clogging up the court system has been sort of the largest topic throughout uh the show so far tonight although we've kind of gone off into the question of you know does it matter when you withdraw your financial support from some sort of mega corporation like uh conagra foods or uh, monsanto for instance and we can get back into that here in a moment but uh whatever you're going to be eating 
you got to brush your teeth. <laughs> you should be brushing your teeth at least some of the time with My Magic Mud. The, for folks that say, you know what, my mouth is clean enough, they haven't tried My Magic Mud. Because once you try it, you'll realize, wow, I didn't have any concept as to how clean my mouth could be. Mm. I wake up in the morning, I don't have film on my teeth anymore. And I only brush with My Magic Mud two or three times a week. Mm. Now... The first time, when you first do it, it's probably a good idea to do it uh, every, every day, once a day. Because in the, the first time I, I did it, I noticed a difference immediately as far as stains on my teeth within four applications um, gone. Now, this is just brushing for two minutes with My Magic Mud. They call it My Magic Mud because it is it comes in a little container and it's, it's a powder and it is black as midnight. Um, it is a, amazing stuff to look at. But not only does it remove stains from your teeth very successfully and clean your mouth very successfully the uh, the the carbon in the, my magic mud just kind of grabs a hold of whatever bacteria in there and yanks them out and, and gets them out of there but for some people who have sort of gum sensitivity issues now i never had this issue but uh, many people have reported that when they have uh, that their gum gum sensitivity is gone for people who are sensitive to flavors and toothpaste just can't stand it my Magic Mud, no flavorings whatsoever. It's completely all natural. It was created by Jessica Armand, a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. And it's it's a fabulous product that's managed to give their family uh, financial uh, you know freedom that they, uh, well, working at a job just never did before. It's MyMagicMud.com. If you're skeptical, fine. I love skepticism. Go to MyMagicMud.com. Check out what biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole has to to say as he explains the benefits of My Magic Mud. MyMagicMud.com. All right. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Last caller was suggesting that, you know, or that there was a discussion, I guess, about the idea of withdrawing one's support from some sort of mega corporation. And, you know, can that make a difference? And I think that generally, you know, one person doesn't make a difference to a mega corporation. They don't care. You know, your cell phone company doesn't care if you cancel your contract and go with one of their competitors. Ultimately, they'll have some sort of script they'll read to try to retain your business. They'll give you maybe a 10% discount. You know, there's some sort of thing they will do to attempt to retain your business. But ultimately, you know, you are a drop in the bucket. I definitely get that. But there are instances like with the Apple uh, debacle when they pulled the blockchain app from their store and they pulled all the other Bitcoin related apps from their store. They had people making videos, taking five hundred, six hundred dollar uh, iPhones and shooting them, <laughs> macheteing them, uh, you know, doing various different damaging, destructive things to them on video and releasing those. And those were going viral and. You know, maybe they got tired of that happening and decided they were going to reinstate that. They got tired of people canceling their accounts. Maybe there was a visible dip in people, uh, you know, canceling iPhone-based phone accounts or whatever. Maybe they did get some sort of feedback from that that they actually paid attention to. Yeah, I was skeptical when the caller called in, and I'm going to retract it. Um, so the fact is, is that you're right. Um, for the local farmer. The and we buy a lot of our food um, locally. We certainly go to the grocery store. Can't get all the produce that we want to get. Um, mm -hmm. My wife does these uh, sort of vegetable smoothies we call green drinks. You're just not going to find watermelons in New Hampshire. I just don't think that's going to. happen. Yeah, you can grow watermelons yeah? in New Hampshire. I don't okay. know what you're talking about. Um, but <laughs> I've you, never seen them sold at the grocery store or anything like that. You have never seen watermelons sold at the grocery From New store. Hampshire. I don't know whether they yeah. label them, how how they label them, but we have grown watermelons oh, at my cool. house. So everything's fine as far as watermelon That's growing if know. you're committed to it. There's got to be stuff that you can't grow up here, though. Indeed. Um, there certainly are long uh, long uh, crops that take a long time that uh, it might be more difficult. But I can't think of any of them off the top of my head. Things grow rather quickly here in New Hampshire, and they have crops that are specialized for it. But the local farmers, it really does make a difference for the uh, you know that few hundred dollars a month or whatever you're, right. you're you throwing their You might be one ways. out of 50 customers there. I don't know. I don't know what's realistic. Indeed. But um, one thing that's kind of cool about New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont is, is this is where local consumption of food is at its highest in the country. Now, the soil here stinks. It's terrible comparative to it's Iowa. It's got rocks in it. 
Yeah, right. Well, yeah, you can't. Like in Florida, I used to take a shovel. I'd stick it in the ground. I'd step on it, shove it all the way in, kind of wiggle it around, and pull up a big yep. thing of what we called dirt. It was actually gray <laughs> uh, sand, but no problem. We called it dirt. Okay. Here, you put a, try to put a shovel in the ground. It goes tink. tink. Yeah. You move it over. It goes tink. <laughs> like there's no. You, you, you just can't dig with a shovel here. You have. I mean, anybody who wants to dig basically has to have a backhoe to do it. So what do you do? Do you have to put the dirt on top of the ground or something? One of those deals. You could. I, I dug, dug a uh, three between three and four foot trench. It just was so hard, Ian. It I took see. me days and days to do this from my house to my boiler. Let's call that thirty feet. Hmm. Um, I wanted to see what it was like, so I took endeavored this project, um, endeavored to take on this project, and it was. It I, I decided I'm never digging in new hampshire again <laughs> i'm going to hire if, if if it's worth digging it's worth hiring somebody to come out with a for with an with excavator a or yeah. something yeah. yeah or you know a backhoe is an excavator on the back of a tractor gotcha but yeah um you know that's the point i'd like to make is is that we're empowered as an area if for whatever reason the big one comes now i don't know whether it will or not it isn't going to be iowa that's doing that great we already have a local economy in place people buying local in new hampshire it's a real thing and vermont and maine this whole area this is it's huge here Mm. so if for whatever reason eh, you know people are always concerned oh well new hampshire secedes what are you gonna do you can be cut off right (laughs) no well you know we're already sort of self cut off Mm. Yeah, I think if we're cut off, then, you know, we're going to lose all these benefits like war and income yeah. taxes and <laughs> whatever will we do and uh, all the uh, federal weapons restrictions that are only taking place in New Hampshire because of the federal government. So yep. I am more than happy to lose all of those things. And, you know, I find that I try I've, I've entertained the idea of like, OK, let's do the, you know, local organic food thing. And, you know, I go to like the food co-ops and it's more expensive. Yeah, you know? I can't and I, justify that. I, I try to do it. But I, I think that the most important thing that a lot of us can do is, you know, keep more money in our pockets, right? So if you I want agree. to boycott something, you know, try to boycott the dollar and get into Bitcoin and silver and stuff like that. I mean, and uh, if you can make those things more desirable and make the dollar less desirable, you know, go ahead Absolutely. and do that. But, of course, all of, uh, so many of these things, so many of the things that we talk about on, on this show and all libertarian uh, type things, it's all, well, if everybody does it or if enough people do it. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's so difficult to motivate. I think the whole point of liberty is understanding that we don't have all the same goals and motives and stuff like that and and trying to say well if everybody does this well you're you already sort of gotten away from the whole point yeah Yeah. so um the reason that i've i eat organic at my house as best i can is it has little to do with um it really it doesn't even have that much to do with local economies it has to do with theft it has to do with property rights violations. And when you look at the grains that are grown in this country, corn, wheat, um, the major grains grown through GMO crops. Now, I under- understand there's a lot of mis- misinformation out there about GMO crops. I don't think they're poison. I think they're a property rights violation. Here's Agreed. why. When you spray Roundup or um, you know pesticides and herbicides, whatever the brands may be, on these pesticide and herbicide res- resistant crops which we'll see how long that uh, they actually are pesticide and herbicide resistant but when you spray that on them there's going to be runoff when the run- and and you, you can spray it indiscriminately at that point you can just lay out you know killing mother nature and her weeds and and her bugs and all these things you can do that but then that stuff's going to run off. It has to run somewhere. It's going to run into the rivers. It's going to run into the creeks, the brooks, the streams, then the rivers. And then it's going to run down, in many cases, down the Mississippi, in most cases down the Mississippi. And there's a dead zone the size of New Jersey down the Mississippi. They don't know why exactly, probably because the people paying for the studies of the government and uh, big, a- big agri, but it... It's not cool to let pesticides and herbicides run under your neighbor's property. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live at 855 450 free. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. 
Firm.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. The number, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. The Liberty Kids are apparently making an impact, uh, at least according to Yahoo News and Reuters, in Los Angeles in the Republican Party. We'll see what they're up to. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. As we continue here, of course, you can bring up anything that you want. Uh, Zen Magnets still under fire by the federal government and maybe standing alone. We'll give you the update on their story when we get a chance. But let's go first to the phones and to the fun. We've got Jimmy. Actually, we're going to Skype where Jimmy is on the line. Hello. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, Jimmy. What's what's going on? Not much. Uh, I see y'all got that Christopher Cantwell there. We do, much to the chagrin of certain uh, listeners. Well, I think he's all right. He looks like a nice fellow. <laughs> hey, uh, somebody said on the show the other day that uh, James Witt, that guy that always calls in, mm -hmm. uh, that, that he has an anger addiction. 
And, yeah, that sounds uh, like something Ian said, yeah? No, somebody yeah. else said that, I think. Okay. It was Derek. Oh, yeah, maybe it was Derek. Yeah, that Derek J. He was starting that movie. Uh, but I think I got proof. Um, so let me, let me go on. I'll tell you all what happened. So me and my wife, Milford, we were at a... Uh, a RoboCop musical downtown here in Tucson. <laughs> starring Katy Perry. Did you did you bring the kids? Yeah, yeah. Brought... Katy Perry. Katy Perry was in it. it Jar Jar. Nice. It's a wonderful. Yeah, Jar Jar Junior. and Grandma Ton, my two baby kids. And uh, <laughs> so I got a text from old uh, James Witt there, you know, and he says, "Hey man, uh, I need to send you something, you know, and and it's real important." So I'm like, "All right, man," you know, and I just told him, "I said shoot me an email," you know. I just started getting on the internets, and I got one of them emails, and uh, he sent me some schematics for a weapon that he was wanting me to make. Uh oh. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. He wants me to build it, you know, and he said it requires the blood of three gay men, and I'm like, <laughs> well, what is this thing? And, and it, it's a, it's a weapon that destroys rainbows. God, <laughs> that's yeah. excellent. I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's how you. Well, I. I guess you have an anger di- addiction too. Well, you know, do, it, is it an addiction or do I just really enjoy anger? I mean, you know, it's a. Di- I you like quit brownies. Anytime. Am I addicted to brownies? <laughs> you know, I could quit eating brownies anytime. Anybody who wants to destroy a rainbow, man, that's you got a problem. But so what I, did you say? I mean, when he approached you with this, he wants you to build this for him, but you disagree with destroying the rainbow. Well, what did the rainbows ever do to me? You know, I don't mm, got a problem point. with them. I'm thinking, are there any other sort of natural phenomenons that you are willing to kill, destroy? Waterfalls. I'll kill a waterfall in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, the waterfalls like are them. creating these rainbows in a lot of cases, That's actually, true. if you think about it. So it, waterfalls are really at the root of the problem. And if there's anything that we should be about uh, as Liberty people, it's striking the root. Strike so the get root, rid <laughs> of the waterfalls. That will take out the rainbows, and you can save the blood of three gay men. For every thousand striking at the rainbows, there's but one striking at the waterfalls. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy, for the call. Toll free number 855 450. Free Rusty's in Houston. You hung up on him. I wanted the the the, the rainbow weapon. He'll call back, don't worry. Uh, Rusty, right. you're uh, you're on the air. Not tonight, but uh, he'll call back again. Rusty, go ahead. Yeah, um, howdy. I was wondering, what's Jill's favorite kind of microbrewery up in New Hampshire, or is that even kind of a big scene up there? Or is it the state regulation make it? somewhat impossible they just deregulated i think on the micro brews as as i understand it that new hampshire may be one of the most fertile places for uh, micro breweries there's all kinds of laws that have been passed in the last couple of years that sort of free the beer um i have a stomach issue that sort of popped up all kinds of laws but i have heard there's been okay there's uh, one law that had a whole kinds of provisions how's that there you go I have this kind of stomach issue. Can't drink beer um, oh, no. for any, you know. I, like That's I can why I've been drinking the wine. I a see. beer, okay. <laughs> but I can't drink beer. Hmm. So I can't really give you any good advice on it. And I'm sorry. I used to love that stuff. Uh, I am not an expert at all. I can tell the difference between good beer and uh, not so great beer. Like I don't like the Swill, the Budweiser, that that stuff. But I like, you know, the what do they call them, the craft beers. I just don't know the, the ones difference you buy in the store, though. I just don't know the difference between any of them. But there's a lot of that up here. There are a lot of breweries and uh, the microbreweries and things. And Chris, you've not been here too, too long, but yeah, I actually, uh, I just went to one in Brattleboro today, uh, oh, Whetstone really? uh, Brewery. I'd actually gone there uh, a couple days ago with Josie Wells, and then Robin's up visiting me, so mm-hmm. I took her over there because it's just beautiful. They got this like beer garden. It's uh, it's outdoors and it's on the water, and it's just a really nice thing. And they've got all these delicious beers there. But I don't know like the New Hampshire brewery scene. I mean, when I'm home if i have beer in my house it's like pbr man mm. you know pbr and you like the swill yeah I, I i like i like money more importantly right like i like money and the uh the the good beers while tasty and and wonderful to have in a restaurant uh would get rather expensive uh you know giving them to guests and you know partying at the house and drinking for the purpose of intoxication that, that, that that's strictly for pbr and uh and some uh canadian ltd yeah but you can get like uh there's there's a brand called double bag 
uh, which you know is like twice the alcohol of a normal beer, basically. But like double yeah. bag has a connotation for me that I don't want in anything <laughs> I'm drinking. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Rusty. I don't know how much help we've been with uh, with your question, but yeah, th- it is definitely true that microbreweries <laughs> have been deregulated, so there's more freedom here now yeah. uh, for that than in the past. Well, con- we're confident you will like this. We just don't have any information. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this as like a homework assignment. Like the next time You're I gonna research. Yeah, I'm gonna go do a lot of research on all right. the beer being now you're in encouraging can't well a drink that's what we need <laughs> no, like he needs encouragement <laughs> so wait now rusty okay so here's what i would recommend if you want to get a good more well-rounded answer to this question there are a couple of places online where free state project participants tend to hang out a few of them one there's a free state project forum you can go to for- forum.freestateproject.org there's also uh people who aren't in the free state project like chris cantwell who you know have moved here anyway because of freedom you're a shire society signer chris so sure i am uh, shiresociety.com when you go there there's a forum link just click into there these are two places where you can go that aren't facebook there are of course facebook related things like the free state project group or the porcupines group uh, where you can go and you can post this question and then you'll have probably you know 50 people possibly looking at the question and maybe you'd be more likely to get answers from uh, from people who know what they're talking about and you could probably find yourself a, a couple of beer drinkers uh when oh, you're talking yeah. to free staters <laughs> no doubt rusty anything else you want to share tonight uh, no, thank you, and uh, it's good to hear Chris on, on the show. Cool, man. Uh, Thanks, buddy. Thanks for the call. Yeah. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So I mentioned Zen Magnets. Quick update on their story. This is from their website, zenmagnets.com. It's a sponsor of the show. We met them actually at a, a Bitcoin conference where uh, Shihan, the uh, the guy who was uh, in charge of Zen Magnets, was walking around offering to sell these magnets. And maybe you've seen these things, Chris. They're the tiny little magnetic balls that you can kind of make sculptures and things out of. Basically, it's something you can sit at your desk and fidget with. I, I haven't seen this, but I've heard you do a commercial for it when I've listened to Free Talk Live. And you're like, this guy's like a hero of mine because he has magnets. And yeah. I'm like, well, magnets are cool and all, but how does this guy become Ian Freeman's hero for having magnets? Because I don't when get the it. government tries to shut him down, he's standing up <laughs> for his business. And it's so rare to see business owners actually stand up for their own business when the government comes to try to regulate them out of business. So the government is coming after magnets now like i thought the yes. milk thing was bad right like i thought like coming after milk was like the height of ridiculousness <laughs> but now we're telling now i'm being told that little round magnets are some sort of uh legal problem even though as shihan points out balloons are far more dangerous like people kids, kids. die from balloons and magnets, they don't really tend to die. Balloons uh, have been around longer. They have that sort of right. social momentum. Well, magnets have been around for a long time, too. Yeah, but not but these round, magnets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little round ball magnets. What say you? Magnets. Magics are like, they're like God's <laughs> magic. So... so- no, go ahead. Let me give you the update here. So but, tell me the story. So the, what, it, it, the, the main company that we used to know about before we learned about Zen Magnets was Buckyballs. Well, they're done for. They settled their lawsuit months ago, and news of MagnaCube. They got out? Yep. News of MagnaCube settlement comes today. They're both out of the fight. We're at a critical crossroads between two options. Behind door number one, shut down and stop sales. This makes the most sense from a business perspective. We exit the business as soon as possible with as much as possible at the recommendation of nearly every Every lawyer and consultant we've talked to, we comply, we recall, the unique warnings don't work, argument goes unchallenged in court, nobody else stands in the way of the magnet ban rulemaking. The CPSC sets the precedent of dodging the most public objection the agency has ever received for any single action item. The CPSC, which stands for the Consumer Product Product Safety Safety Commission, Commission, wins its gamble. Behind door number two, all in for the conscience. Fight for warnings and consent, democracy and beautiful spherical magnets, because how others treat you is their karma, but how you react is your karma. Because the beauty and wonder that magnets generate is worth a rescue effort. Magnet spheres work exactly as they're supposed to, and nearly everybody, over 99.99%, is able to use them safely. Uh, We'll talk more about what's happening with uh, Zen magnets here in a little bit, and I'll get a a set of them out for you here, uh, Chris, so you can know what they're all about we're just really don't talking swallow about them. magnets being chased just by don't, government don't don't swallow them you're gonna be all right with that you can you handle what, yourself i want to swallow them okay there's more, there's more coming tell up me what to do in moments hour three coming up free talk live geico presents strange savings stories 
Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special. 12 month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 6, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,297, silver opened at $19.83, and Bitcoin is trading around $582.99. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. In the news, U.S. political prisoner Schaefer Cox will file an appeal to his 26-year conviction on conspiracy charges. Cox was arrested in the spring of 2011 and accused of conspiracy to murder government officials. Thrown out of Alaska State Court due to illegal wiretaps by the FBI, charges were refiled at the federal level. FBI tapes indicate all suggestions of conspiracy and violence were suggested only by FBI informants, not Cox himself. Cox recently filed pro se motions to the appellate court that resulted in the removal of his court-appointed attorney due to her political activism for gun control. Cox, founder of the Alaska Peacemakers Militia, felt her political activism was a conflict of interest. For more information, visit SchaeferCox.com. Community activists in San Marcos, Texas, are well on their way toward reaching the public through a new low-power FM radio station that's been granted a construction permit by the FCC. About 30 supporters met at the Rail Yard Bar and Grill in San Marcos this past weekend to get a status report and to see the list of shows that will air when the station goes live. Attendees recorded short promotional pieces for the new station, stating why they support community radio. Sam Brannon, one of the founders of the station, said the response from volunteers in the community has been fantastic, and they are building something special. The station will broadcast from 104.1 FM in San Marcos, Texas, with the call letters of KZSM. To learn more, visit kzsm.org. Based on new intelligence leaks released by The Intercept, there is a second leaker releasing documents related to surveillance in the U.S. government's terrorism watch list. The documents released Tuesday by The Intercept are dated August 2013 after whistleblower Edward Snowden had already flown to Russia. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live each Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM in Austin, Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 6, 2014. 
Make sure you check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. According to documents leaked to The Intercept, nearly half of the people on the government's terrorist screening database are described as having no recognized terrorist group affiliation. The documents reveal that out of 680,000 individuals on the watch list, 280,000 have no known connection to terrorist groups. The documents reveal that under President Obama, the no-fly list has grown tenfold, with 47,000 individuals barred from flying. An additional 16,000 people, 1,200 of them Americans, are classified as selectees, targeted for enhanced screenings at airports. In late July, The Intercept first reported on leaked copies of the procedures for placing individuals on government watch lists or the no-fly list. According to a new survey by the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism, the current greatest threat to the U.S. government is the sovereign citizen movement. The study, Understanding Law Enforcement Intelligence Processes, found that 52% of those interviewed believed that sovereign citizens were a serious terrorist threat. Researchers interviewed 364 officers of 175 state, local, and tribal law enforcement entities. The second and third top threats are Islamist extremists and militia patriot groups. START receives funding from the United States Department of Homeland Security, as well as funding from other agencies, universities, and private organizations. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show. With a focus on all things topical and liberty-oriented, Corey Moore and his band of co-hosts, including me, keep a sense of humor while attacking the state. The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, at CoreyMooreShow.com and LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 6, 2014. Make sure you visit our website, thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The American Robin heralds the beginning of spring in temperate climates across North America. Its red breast makes it easily identifiable as the most disturbingly efficient murderer in the animal kingdom. Robins inculcate their young with these twisted maws. We see an adult robin feeding its young with the ripped apart viscerae of an innocent worm. Like the Greek hero Atreus eating the flesh of his children at his own table, this black deed must surely curse the entire species. Even the most depraved acts of humanity pale in comparison to the robin's wickedness. Like idiot rapists, they commit their foul deeds with neither foresight nor hindsight. They live entirely in the present. Living beyond space and time, their god is the awful seething maelstrom of chaos at the center of the unfeeling universe. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here at 855-453. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. You get to create the content right there on the front page of the site. We were actually talking about one of the stories about the man who raised over $55,000 to make potato salad. We were discussing that during one of the breaks here. So that's... What? right. Right there, yeah. One of those Indiegogo campaigns. Apparently, he was going to make some potato salad, and the people support it. They are behind him. I got it. this Indiegogo thing, man. I just don't get it. People, people will, you know, want me to help them do their Indiegogo campaigns, and I certainly have. We've we've had some success with it, but at the same time, you know, it seems like some people get some radical things going and and really make you know market these things well. I don't know. It's baffling to me. Fifty five thousand dollars to make potato salad. I saw uh, Ian Chaffee, the guy who runs uh, Liberty Fest NYC, which I will be debating Jeffrey Tucker at in October. Oh, we've never been invited. I wouldn't know. Oh, well, you should uh, <laughs> you should just buy a ticket and come because it's a good time. But I'm going to stay out of New York if I can avoid it. Well, that's there's something to be said for that. Yeah. But in any case, he he put up like a, uh, I think he did a gun, GoFundMe, not uh, Indiegogo. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, pay for me to live in Disneyland for one year. And I was what? like, what are you talking? And I don't think he raised the money. People were like, oh, are you just, out of your mind? It was one like, of those things where he just wanted to see if people would do it. 
it? Yeah, I guess he wanted to go live in Disneyland for a year. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think he was lost his mind, frankly, right? right. And, and he's just crazy and was like, maybe people will just like pay me to go like live in Disneyland. And uh, I don't think would. it panned out too well, but people do these things. Right. So wait, this wasn't even like a, a, like the, the potato salad was not like a fundraiser gimmick for no. something else. He was like, pay me $55,000 to yeah. make potato salad? I kind of feel like you have to believe in the magic of... Uh, you know, like the magic the socialists might believe in, that people are just, you know, that way that they would do potato salad to, in order to do it. Libertarians are never going to believe strongly enough that someone would give them fifty five thousand dollars for potato salad or pay them to live in Disney World. That they just can't. It's not the faith behind the magic. You know what I mean? Right. They don't have it's, it. I'm I'm just like, hey, this is not sound economic policy, and I, I'm, I'm thinking of this as if, uh, you know, we're. we're uh, in terms of Rothbardian anarcho-capitalist economics, like this does not seem like a sound investment. And other people are like, well, no, it'd be great if I just gave this guy like all my money so that he could make potato salad. And yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to actually come through with uh, you know his plans here. So I'm looking at this as a Kickstarter, apparently not an Indiegogo. Now the difference is, as I understand it, Kickstarter, you only get the money if you reach your goal. Indiegogo will go ahead and give you whatever you've raised basically now they take a fee off the top obviously but after the fee whatever right. you've raised they'll give you even even if you didn't make the goal this guy did make his goal his initial goal was ten dollars uh and his uh, target at this point is or the, the 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 amount he's raised it's now time is up uh fifty five thousand four hundred ninety two dollars with about six thousand nine hundred and eleven people backing him up this is the audacity of hope to uh to take another uh Wicked Thief's uh, line. Um, (laughs) This man, you know, people wanted to throw him, everybody wants to throw him 10 bucks because he was willing to to put up an Indiegogo for $10 Mm -hmm. to make potato salad. I get it now. I mean, this is just, yeah, you trolled the internet. Good job. And here's here's a five spot. But he's not going to, I don't think he's going to be able to really uh, follow through with his promises, right? Because a lot of these things, you got to have the perks. I mean, you don't have to. But I've never seen a fundraiser without the perks. But but if his if his promise is I will make potato salad, and mm. the funds have been raised, I'm pretty sure with fifty five grand he's capable of making some potato salad. That's true. But I'm talking about the perks, right? So his goal was to raise this amount of money to make potato salad. But in order to reach that goal, he offered his customers, if you will, the pledgers. Perks. You get these what? bennies. You get these things. Like, so I'm gonna, I'll go through his perks, and we'll see if you think that he can actually I follow through. I will mail with this. you some potato salad, which will be rancid by the time it gets through the snail mail. And- <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it at that with, point. <laughs> with your help, this is if you pledge a dollar or more, and 2,085 people took this level of, uh, of pledge. We'll be on our way to a successful potato salad. You will get a thank you posted on our website, and I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. <laughs> now, if he's only going to make one batch of potato salad, and I don't know how long that's going to take him. I suppose he could sort of make that batch over a period of days. See, they're trolling this guy back now. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah? You think you're going to say everybody's name who's given? No problem. Here's 50 cents. It's like, what happens if he reneges on the offer? If he, you know, isn't able to follow through with all these promises, he may have a bunch of upset customers here, pledgers. Uh, and to pledge two dollars or more, you will receive a photo of him making the potato salad. A thank you posted to our website. By a photo, does he mean something sent through the mail? It doesn't. I don't. That's not made clear. Okay. I imagine that will be an email. But uh, and he says, I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. Well, one thing I know for certain is is that you can mass email people who uh, pledge. Right? Sure, with these so, things, yeah. So you course. can probably mass email people with a picture of you making uh, yes. the potato salad. I think Even you if you can give the picture one. to the people who only gave a dollar instead of the people who gave two dollars, you're still fulfilling when you yes. give it to everybody. I think that he will be able to do that, and it's likely that he can email people based on their group of pledge. And as who well. knows what incantations he mutters across the uh, the potato a salad as he's making it. Um, I mean, there's no real way to prove whether or not he has said your name. Well, oh, I see what you mean. He's not necessarily. Yeah, that's a good point. If he's not recording the making of the potato salad. Well, going on here, pledging three dollars or more uh, to over 1,200 backers on this, you will receive a bite of the potato salad. A photo, the thank you on the website, and you'll say your, you'll is this say your name out loud. Is this a bite as in a... <laughs> Do you have to be there in person to receive the bite, or you, I guess not, because right, the like other the bite one... has been proffered. I didn't say that I was going to send you the bite, yeah. but receive does kind of... 
It indicates sounds like send. he'll be sending something. So, I mean, at $3, he would likely be able to send that out and yeah. still be all right. Because, you know, we cover the cost of postage. You can probably send a bite for less than 50 I don't think cents. it covers, I mean, it, it covers time. You it on the inside on the of envelope. an envelope. <laughs> 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 like a salad just smashed into an envelope. And at $55,000, that should be enough money to cover the cost of sending, or not, not just the cost, but the time it would take you to, you know, lick and stamp yeah. all those gonna, envelopes. A bite, you're going to have to put in one of those little one-ounce solo cup things it's you could get the uh the, the to-go there's no uh, shooters th- well i mean y- if you just spread it on the inside of the envelope, that's still a bite's worth of potato salad. You're gonna if you spread it on the inside of an envelope, postal uh, workers are gonna come to your house and kill you. <laughs> it turns to powder. They accuse you of sending anthrax. It's it, a senator had pledged this thing, and now the the Capitol building has to be cleared out. And no, <laughs> this is where things get to go cr- are going crazy here. Things uh, are going crazy now. Like after he got fifty five thousand yeah, no, dollars, the bite's a problem. No, this is crazy right here. Pledge okay. five dollars or more. If now five hundred eighty nine people did this. Deluxe package. Choose a potato salad appropriate ingredient. Okay, potato salad appropriate, I guess. So that could restrict the possible options to add to the potato salad. Uh, So I don't think there are 589 possible uh, potato salad appropriate ingredients. So I guess some of those backers will have to agree on the same ingredient being thrown into the potato salad. But having 589 people get to decide which ingredients go into the potato salad could make for quite a bit of a messy concoction. Oh, yeah. I could uh, I could imagine that some people had pledged the $5 just to make a completely inappropriate <laughs> yes. suggestion. Yeah. Uh, number, Bleach. And then you get this, you know, <laughs> like with all these things, you get the same stuff the other people got from the lower level. So, yeah, so you get to choose an item and then all the other stuff. Pledge $10 or more. Over 460 people went with this one. This is where you get to hang out in the kitchen with him while he makes the potato salad. That's pretty easy. How many? 400 and 464 what? backers on it, this It one. doesn't mean that he has to. I mean, he could make uh, potato salad whatever days you tell somebody the day that you're going to make. You know, this is your day to hang out in the kitchen. Yeah. You don't make it. You don't make it. I don't think that's a problem. Number, uh, the next one up, $20 or more. Only Now, only four people did this one. Uh, potato Madness. Rece- well, there were only four available. Receive a potato salad themed haiku written by me. <laughs> Your name carved into a potato that will be used in the potato salad, a sign jar of mayonnaise, the potato salad recipe, and hang out in the kitchen and all the other stuff. Pay, uh, pledge $25 or more. 289 people did this. The hat. Receive a potato salad themed hat along with a bite of the potato salad and etc. etc. And all of these, by the way, are estimated to be delivered by December. So he's going to have four months Uh, to get these things fulfilled. I mean, that sounds like a real tall order. I am receiving word that you did have to go to his house to get a bite of the potato salad. So he was not going to be sending uh, potato anthrax through the mail. Yeah, I think this this is deliverable. Um, I think this guy can do this, and especially you cons- more. you've got to consider that how many Americans are out of work right now. I mean, fifty-five thousand dollars for uh, a little over, a little under a half a year's work. Not, it's a bad, not bad. Not bad. That's true. It's not bad. We'll come back with more here, uh, and you can share your thoughts toll free eight fifty-five four fifty free. I, we still have to talk about the Zen magnets thing. I know we, yeah, we, we have left that one that. dangling. Uh, we'll come back here in a moment. Dangling balls here on Free Talk Live. <laughs> Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You are invited to take control toll-free. Oops, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Join us online. And if you've got Bitcoin, you can actually toss a little bit in our Bitcoin tip jar over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Oh, you don't have any Bitcoin yet? Well, if you've taken the time to get your Bitcoin wallet for free over at blockchain.com, the next step, once you have your Bitcoin wallet, is to go to expresscoin.com, and that is the best way to buy Bitcoins, and now Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, uh, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. It's very easy and fast and inexpensive as well. I don't think you're going to find a better deal as far as the rate. In fact, if you use coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com, you can get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for no transfer fee. Now, if you go over 40 bucks, it's only 3%, which, again, I think is the best price you're going to find on the Internet. ExpressCoin.com, you can use uh, wire transfer, money order, check. You can even deposit cash at a credit union that has what's called shared branching. You can do it all from your smartphone as well. Go and download their app at expresscoin.com. And by the way, expresscoin you can now use in Canada as well. Expresscoin.com as we continue here. We were talking about the guy who's raised over $55,000 in order to uh, make a potato salad. And he did this on Kickstarter. His original goal was to raise $10. He raised fifty-five thousand dollars, and uh, you know, blew through his goal here. Now we're kind of going over some of the perks that you get because in order to do these fundraisers online, you usually probably want to offer perks to people to sweeten the deal. Of course, the problem with the perks in this is, case, he's just adding mayonnaise to it. 
I haven't seen anything about mayonnaise yet, but there Who is adds something. sweetener to potato salad, man? There is something which would allow you, if you had uh, bought in to add mayonnaise to the potato salad, you could add you know various different potato salad appropriate ingredients. There you could hang out in vinegar, his kitchen. Vinegar-based potato salads, but mayonnaise, I think, is pretty mm-hmm. common in potato salad. You could hang out in his kitchen, uh, according to a pledge. Uh, let's see if you pledged, I believe, $20. No, wait a minute. Ten dollars. All you have to do is pledge pledge ten dollars. You can hang out in his kitchen. If you pledge twenty dollars, you get a potato uh, potato themed haiku. Your name would be carved into a potato that we used in the salad. A signed jar of mayonnaise. The t- the potato salad recipe. Hang out in the kitchen. Uh, choose an ingredient to add to the p- potato salad. Receive a bite of the salad. Get a photo of him making the salad. A thank you posted to his website, and he'll say your name out loud while making the potato salad. So again, each one of these. Higher and higher pledged dollar amounts includes pretty much everything that was in the ones prior to it. $25 or more, 289 people uh, signed up for this. They will receive a potato salad-themed hat along with the rest of the stuff. Uh, You do have to add $10 to ship the hat outside the United States. Pledge $35 or more, 585 people did this. The the homage T-shirt. Receive a limited edition T-shirt designed and printed by Columbus, Ohio T-shirt company Homage, and then all the rest of the stuff as well. You know, the bite of the salad, etc. Pledge fifty dollars or more. One hundred and six people did this. Potato salads of the world. Receive a recipe book with potato salad recipes inspired by each country where we have a backer. <laughs> Oh wow! This guy really could. This is a great um, GoFundMe or whatever it is, uh, Indiegogo. Uh, this know, is a Kickstarter, I think. Kickstarter, right? yeah, Kickstarter. Whatever it is, it's really well done. That's the reason this guy did so well. Yeah, I think um, I have to come up with something creative. Like um, I don't know, I'm gonna make macaroni salad. I think you can and shoot I, a paper I clip. Would this work? Well, you <laughs> well, don't well, get to mess with my paper clips. Would the macaroni salad work the second time? I mean, uh, the guy's already kind of won this by doing the potato salad. How often do the imitators actually yeah. meet their goals? Oh, I think that this this joke's good one time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, this is the final joke? one. I mean, it seemed like a sound investment to give this guy fifty thousand dollars <laughs> to make potato salad. Uh, if you pledged $110 or more, and only 21 people did this, you are the Platinum Potato. Receive the recipe book, the shirt, and the hat, along with the bite of the potato salad and all the other stuff. So there you go. You get everything uh, with that. So I'm sorry. I was wrong. Each one of these pledges did not in- include everything from the pledges before it. So if you uh, if you got the hat thing, you wouldn't necessarily get the shirt. You got would it. have to buy the hat thing and the shirt thing or the, the bigger one. Or the big so. one. I wonder if somebody's like walking around wearing that hat and shirt right now. Or, well, this isn't going to be deliverable until December, I guess. So That's true. Some fool is going to be out there with a potato salad hat <laughs> and shirt. And he's going to be like, I paid like 150 bucks for this outfit. And uh, I got a real chuckle out of it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the internet, people pay for chuckles, man. Yeah. yeah it's a viv- a laugh is a valuable thing. Let's Apparently. get back to a serious issue here, though. In the last hour, we had talked about Zen magnets. And, Chris, I did bring you out a uh, box of Zen magnets here from the studio. Are you now aware of what the Zen magnets are? And if so, how would you describe what they are for so, our So they are these um, – These are they are powerful magnets. They are these little magnetic balls. They're like BBs, basically. They're ball bearings or whatever. And, a little bit and, larger yeah, than BBs. And they and – they, uh, that would be interesting to have, like, magnetic BBs, but no, they get stuck to the barrel of the gun. Anyway, so <clears throat> the in any case, they're very powerful round magnets. And, like, I don't I don't think that they're, like, the most interesting thing in the world, certainly. But, like, you know, you can have some enjoyment screwing around with them at your desk. Yeah, right? it's a total desk toy thing. But they're also right. an art medium. People make uh, That's you know, true. sculptures. Uh, yeah. Young I lady in the studio them. here who had just made a bracelet out of mm-hmm. them and, you know, talked about um, uh, making jewelry out of Ian's uh, balls. And right. we, we thought that that was... Uh, you know, some fun. So I think that these are not the most exciting thing in the world, but of course now there's all sorts of excitement thanks to the Consumer Product, product Safety Pro- Commission. Pre- Consumer Product Safety Commission because the safety news. I think it's really funny that the Consumer Product Safety Commission is really concerned about these little magnetic balls that I'm holding while I have a loaded revolver on my <laughs> hip with hollow point <laughs> bullets in it. And this is somehow a bigger problem. <laughs> Well, not that you would propose to do Not that I would propose for them to do anything to my revolver. I'd make their life extraordinarily difficult if they tried. But what they have done here is they've, short. they've run these businesses out of business. Zen Magnets is the last business standing in this arena. 
the stores that have been selling these things. They are too scared to actually sell these products. Um, and then, you know, these things have had warnings all over them in the past. I mean, when you buy the product, the you know, the wrapping on the outside, it's got, you know, very obvious warnings. Like the first thing you see, the last thing you see is the name Zen Magnus. First thing you see is the warning that's in your face. Like, don't eat these things. It's like I mean, worse than the tobacco for, warnings. For adults only. This is not a toy, you know, stuff like that. And, and as he points out here, as he's pointed out in interviews with us in the past, basically what the Consumer Product Safety Commission is saying here in this case, if they're successful, is that warnings don't work. Which is, of course, what they do. They require they mandate products. warnings. Yeah, they, they mandate warnings. <laughs> so for the longest time, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has been, that's been their job, is to come up with, you know, well, you need to put this warning on your package or else, that kind of thing, mandated government things. And now they're arguing their whole reason for existence is for naught, that all this time when they've been warning people, that hasn't been good enough. Now, warnings are no longer effective, and so we just have to stop people from being able to access these products. And that could mean that if they're successful in stopping the magnets, that they could be coming after your favorite product next. Certainly. And and, and the thing what we were talking about during the commercial break was what they are saying is the problem here is that if you eat, not even if you just eat one of these magnets or even if you just eat two of these magnets, but if you eat one of these magnets and then like an hour later eat another magnet that as the magnets pass through your uh, gastrointestinal system, Mm -hmm. that somewhere in your intestines they may get pinch your intestines together. And I'm like, how how many times does this possibly happen that not only do you eat the magnet, but then an hour later you eat another one? I mean, Mm-hmm. It's it's probably happened once. It I don't could know be two. So far, you could wait man. two hours to eat another one. We'll come back with more here in moments. <laughs> uh, the toll free, and of course, as Shihan has pointed out, uh, balloons are far more dangerous. But nobody's proposing to ban the balloons. We'll come back with more here in moments. Uh, you can take control, and we'll give you the update on what's happening with Zen magnets. It's Free Talk Live. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, Is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Why would they go around bombing people around the world? Doesn't that make us less safe? Well, you know what? I guess some of these people got it coming. It's a good day to be dead if you're a terrorist search. And how many of the people that the U.S. military has too. killed in the last decade have been terrorists? A whole bunch of them. You know what? what percentage? You like some liberal church. What percentage? A lot of people I'm not a liberal, sir. Coming. Liberals you support war, from what I can tell. Take a look. Obama looks war. support war when we need it. We have justifiable war. We need war. war. <laughs> people like you. <laughs> you try it for good men do nothing, you jerk. Wait, wait, wait a second, child. I'm, the jerk. I'm not bombing part. anyone. You can feel however you feel about me, but Smedley Butler, the two-time Medal of Honor winning Marine, felt the same way. Well, you know what? The courts are headed the right way. You know what? We should have went after China. We should have chased those tricons across that river, and we should have bombed them. Uh, we should have nuked them. We should have... Uh, you are horrible. Them. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You are welcome to bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Chris Cantwell joining us here as our guest co host. Ian Anarchist, Mark. atheist, expletive. <laughs> ChristopherCantwell.com is his website. ModUp.net. If you've been feeling fatigued, you need focus, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into Modafinil. ModUp.net's got it. And studies show that one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall. So you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from ModUp.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. At ModUp.net, they provide the highest premium quality Modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results, and that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. ModUp.net also gives you a heck of a discount when you pay with Bitcoin, 33% off, and to make the deal even better, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. And I believe the code FTL works whether you pay with Bitcoin or other methods. Uh, so go to modup.net, world-class service at a great price for Modafinil. That's modup, M-O-D-U-P dot net. And don't forget code FTL as we continue here. We'll get back to uh, the Zen Magnets story as they continue to be persecuted by the federal government for their love of making magnets for you to have on your desk. That's apparently a very, very dangerous thing, and they need to be stopped. But first, the lawnmower man is on the line in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live, lawnmower man. Howdy, how are you? How are you doing? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I wanted to say to Derek J. Speaking of uh, my so-called friend from Tucson, uh, that anger is an energy, and if you keep on lying about people, one of these days they might bite back instead of just barking. And that's my advice to him. God love him. Uh, I hope you don't lead him into some uh, situations that he afterwards would like to find that he might not have wanted to be there after all. You know. What are you getting? Uh, what are you nice getting? In, uh, what are you getting at there? I'm not really understanding you. Well, if you keep on shoving a camera in a, a police face, one of these days he might crack it over. I've Derek's never head. shoved a camera in any cop's face, and no, I don't I'm think Derek J has I'm, either. I'm just, just saying, Ian. I watched a video of that young punk that. Apparently broke somebody's back. I don't know why he's not in jail, but I wanted to talk about the harm principle. Continuing thoughts about the conversation we were having yesterday, because I'm going to hear to the harm principle always have been Ian, not the non-aggression principle, which is something different. For instance, on, from on Liberty, John Moore, John Stuart Mill uh, articulated the only purpose for which 
power can be rightfully exercised over any member of civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others, a.k.a. the oil embargo around the evil empire of Japan uh, and that it responded by murdering 3,000 Americans in Honolulu and ended up uh, getting millions more lives wrecked in the process. But the oil embargo didn't didn't provoke the Japanese empire any more than, let's say, Mark, can I talk to you about blowback? Well, the, the, you're talking about John about- Stuart Mill. I, I I started to read this paper on liberty because I think this is an interesting thing. And it's it's a it's an idea that a lot of people that I have ideological rivalries talk about that they're talking about instead of non-aggression, they're talking about non-harm. And if you listen to John Stuart Mill, what he actually says is that like an inferior race can be you know ruled by despotism, and that's perfectly fine just because uh, you know it's preventing harm, right? And mm-hmm. this that's is an a good idea comeback, where Chris, I'm sorry, yeah, that's a good comeback. But I'm not talking about inferior races. I, I know I, I know that you're not well, saying that, I but I, I'm, I'm on liberty. Well, what, I, what I'm trying what I'm trying to get at here, though, is that this is this idea non harm, right? That non harm is somehow more important than non aggression, right? I'm thinking that if I, I, I find it so d- difficult to believe that I'm trying to set a standard of behavior where the standard of behavior is don't initiate force against people, don't steal, and that this is somehow like a, a standard that people just simply can't adhere to because they want to, okay. they're more concerned about a concept like harm, which is a subjective, right. meaningless okay. term. May I respond to this? Yeah. Speaking of inferior races and harm, the Japanese evil empire of Japan had an army in China that considered the Chinese quite literally an inferior race. Now, I could talk for hours about what they did in response to that hardened belief that they had, the mass murder, rape, torture, pillage that they did for years before they bombed Pearl Harbor, speaking of the non-aggression uh, and inferior races. But I wanted to ask Mark a question because I was thinking along the lines of prov- being provoked, because uh, that's what Ian left with me with the last final thought last night, Chris. Uh, Mark, I'm listening. Uh, speaking, uh, if you're, if that uh, your partner in crime in 1988 had a gang of four offspring that are now all grown up and wanted to avenge, uh, your I know you're not in sentiments with the. I just call him a partner in crime because he was a criminal. I got you. Uh, if his kids grew up, I think up it's actu- and, actually about as accurate as they could be the description as we right, can find. Okay. Right. Here's the hypothetical I have you about being provoked. And blowback uh, is if uh, while you were away from home, it was invaded, and Laura and Jack were at home, and they managed to get a 911 call out before uh, the the gang of four surrounded her and uh, did awful things. They're up to no good, and all then, so to speak, the the Bearcat rolled in around onto your property, and all the state police surrounded your property, so that nobody could get in. That was with the gang of four, and none of the gang of four could get out. Now, are they provoking the gang of four? Are they, or are they uh, embargoing your house, so to speak, for good non-aggression reasons? In other words, nobody else would get killed. Now, maybe Jackie and Laura would be, but nobody else would be. Uh, okay, well, cause it would I sound to me like they're won. they're uh, falling down on their duty. I mean, if a nine one one call has been made, then uh, they have the you know <laughs> they've been given every uh, opportunity to to go into the house and do something about it. I don't think you need to well, try officer to officer uh, safety, Mark. And thanks, James, for the call. Your phone for whatever reason really right. crummy tonight. Uh, but you know, officer safety is uh, paramount, Mark. I mean, they're not going to just come in where they could get shot. They got to protect their officers. And and if he's talking about a situation where there's you know intruders in a home and there's victims and stuff like that, we don't need to talk about non-harm. This is non-aggression, right? And the police, uh, you know, obviously commit a great deal of aggression in order to get their resources and whatnot. But that's not to say that like a market entity could not do this without uh, initiating all of this force. And you could call somebody in to come and help you. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure where he was going with I'm this. Not it sure almost either. sounded like he was threatening Derek in the beginning of the thing, and I was like that that irked me. And then he starts with the non-harm. Harm thing, which is something that I could I could scream about that for hours. Well, James will often tie in t- uh, three or four topics into one thing and uh, sort of br- always bringing it back to Japan. Yeah, he's obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's not like it's not like I don't mention it too.
I, I do want to. I want to get into the magnet. Thing. Yeah, I'm because wanna, yeah. I, and I don't know where Shihan Q is from, but uh, you know maybe he's from Japan. I, I think he's Chinese. I just guess. Is he Chinese? Well, I anyway, know, Taiwanese. You know. Uh, so uh, the question is, what's Zen Magnets going to do? They are under attack. They're the last company left. Bucky Balls, they're done. Magnet Cube, they're done. And he says, pointing out that he's got two options: one, shut down and stop sales; two, all in for conscience. And he says that uh, the, the beauty that magnets uh, and wonder that magnets generate is worth a rescue effort. Magnet spheres work exactly how they uh, are supposed to, and nearly everybody is able to use them safely. Statistical polls show consumers would rather see a ban of tobacco than an all-ages nationwide non-consensual market removal of magnet sets used for art and education. We can sleep without regret, knowing that as the last company standing, Zed Magnets fought for what was right. Nothing rational lies in between these two options, as costs and cortisol levels only go up from here on. The paramount issue in this case is the Consumer Product Safety Commission's argument that warnings don't work, alleging that, quote, no warnings or instructions could be devised that would effectively communicate the ingestion hazard so that the warnings and instructions could be understood and heeded by consumers to reduce the number of magnet ingestion incidents, unquote. This issue alone makes an influential case with vast implications, as warnings are the traditional method used to encourage public safety. Warnings are an agreement between a customer and a product. The consumer retains the benefit of using and choosing a product in exchange for the responsibility of doing so. And by assuming people are unable to follow or understand instructions, despite the lack of confirmed injuries linked to Zen magnets, the CPSC makes the judgment that the American population is not worthy or capable of deciding for themselves. We'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for your call and thoughts. If you dial right now, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Christopher Cantwell. And Mark. Join Chris over on his website, ChristopherCantwell.com. He does himself a podcast, some garbage podcast. Some garbage podcast. And it's not on any uh, terribly specific schedule, but we do shows from time to time, and we try to make them uh, as entertaining as possible. Recorded right here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah, I'm right across the, the street in the Some Garbage Podcast studios. In the Liberty Ghetto. Yeah. Here in Keene. <laughs> Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Zen Magnets is under attack, and they are the only company left that makes little tiny magnetic balls that are very, very strong that you can make into, you know, sculptures and doodads and you know, can fiddle with while you're at your desk. It's very cool. I like them when I'm on the phone, I've got to yeah, say. Yeah, they're perfect. They're perfect for you know, keeping your hands It's a busy. U.S.-based company. Is that the situation here? I know Shahan is based in the United States, but the balls are manufactured in China, from what I understand. Because I'm, I'm thinking that, like, like I, I, I think I said it off the air, I have the little magnetic cubes, right? Mm-hmm. And these things obviously could, could could create the same exact problem. I don't know why like the, the magnetic spheres would be like a bigger problem. And you can certainly uh, buy these things on eBay uh, from any number of you know overseas vendors. And I don't think the the, the consumer product safety commission can't stop would that. have no. a whole hell of a lot to say about it. Well, That's probably I mean, true. Everybody knows spheres are more yummy than than cubes. Yes, they do. I want to eat them. But these yeah. things used to be in stores. You know, they used to be able to go and and get these at a toy store or you know an office store. Or something like he that. He has a few places that sell them. Don't you remember? Still? Oh, that's right. He did say a couple places were like on board. Originally, he was sort of a, um, uh, you know, like an only an online business. But since, you know, the marketplace has opened up for him because yeah. everybody else has gone out of business. Everybody else has gone out of business. He's the only one in like the world that sells these, or at least in America, that sells, you know, spherical mag- magnets. So he's going to keep going on this. And despite the fact that everybody else has bowed out of the, the running, and he's pointing out here that the CPSC, the Computer Pro- uh, Consumer Product Safety Committee, is saying that people are unable to follow the warnings, that they don't believe that warnings actually work, or that because some people won't follow the warnings, that therefore warnings don't work or they're not effective enough, so therefore the product should just be banned entirely rather than have a small, very, very small chance that any that something harmful could happen. And of course, as Shahan points out, Zen Magnets has never had anybody allege that anything harmful happened with their product. But going on, he says that uh, the CPSC alleges that magnets, quote, have low utility to customers, unquote, and are, quote, not necessary to consumers, unquote, is uh, non-consensually replacing a consumer's judgment with a value judgment of its own. So these are the excuses the CPSC is using to say, well, you know, we're just going to pull these off the shelves. It's not like they're valuable or anything like that. Who really needs these magnets anyway? You people, you can just keep yourself busy twiddling your thumbs at Who your needs desk. balloons? Ban yeah. all the useless products. <laughs> it does not matter if you're a parent who knows your child can safely handle, handle magnets. It doesn't matter if you don't have children and want to use magnets at your own home. And it doesn't matter if you're a professor looking to build sculptures for demonstrations of molecular bonding or platonic solids. The CPSC is seeking no middle ground on the subject and assumes with great prejudice that the American population cannot be trusted to ever keep magnets out of the mouths of their children, as if magnets are the first product to be dangerous if misused by an audience that it's not intended for. 
Now, uh, Shahan goes on. He's got a paragraph about democracy here. Of course, you know, he's not necessarily a libertarian. Yeah, I'm not uh, a big fan of democracy. But personally. going on, here's what he has to say. Then there's the fact that removing— A lot of people just use it as a place filler for yeah. things like yeah. freedom and whatever. Democracy doesn't have any—sadly, <laughs> this could very well be the result of democracy. Well, in this, pa- in this, this case— This is what democracy looks like. In this case, he's arguing that people want these things to stay on the market. He says that removing magnet sets from the market is the single most unpopular action item ever sought by the CPSC— and isolated from all other points, this fact alone warrants that the federal agency be challenged. Even those who are not interested in magnets yet uh, will still have a vested interest in the accountability of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. A peek at comments on related news will show a clear consensus against magnet prohibition. Statistically, PPP and Google Consumer Surveys have shown 9 out of 10 consumers disagree that artistic educational magnet sets should be prohibited to all ages as required for the rulemaking process, the CPSC must receive public comments. In the rulemaking for magnets, they received over 2,500 comments, which were nearly all against banning magnets. The 2,500 comments represent more than half the comments ever received by the agency in <laughs> its history. <laughs> and while we've received countless messages of encouragement, CPSC uh, Commissioner Robert Adler reports to having received thousands of emails, angry emails in objection. Adler, the reappointed chairman, considers himself a pragmatist as he's concerned about, quote, resentment among members of the public. When confronted about balloons having greater incident rate than magnet spheres while sharing similar warning attributes, Adler says, quote, we should be looking at balloons, too. (laughs) So you you think for a moment there you've made a good point, right? Like, oh, well, balloons, they've been around forever. You guys haven't gotten complaints. Well, we need to look into this. These people are the product Nazis. I mean, who needs balloons anyway? There have actually been, like, uh, some balloon restrictions placed. I I know that, like, it's like a a serious crime to, like, release mylar balloons into the air in New York. Uh, So I don't want to encourage these people, clearly. But, yeah, it's helpful to draw those sort of uh, comparisons. Uh, I'm looking at the warning label on this thing yeah. right now. Why don't you share says, that with us? Warning, do not swallow magnets. <laughs> it sounds funny to even say it. Like, how old do you have to be to play with these? Dunno, 14 years old in the U.S. for a strong magnetic toy. Unless it's not a toy, then no age limit. But they're fun magnetic balls. Aren't they a toy? Unless it's a science kit, then the age recommendation is 8+. plus. But really, it's whatever age a person stops <laughs> swallowing non-foods. Place, <laughs> says, place swallowing <laughs> magnets on your don't do list with breathing water and drinking poison. <laughs> Call poison control if more than one is swallowed. By the way, this product is a science kit for sure. I love good the stuff, way you worded man. that. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's really cool. So going on here uh, from zenmagnets.com, magnets. Spear, uh, spheres are not defective. They work exactly as they're supposed to. Strong to hold formation, round to allow connections at non-fixed angles, used in mass for endless possibilities. There's absolutely no replacement or substitute for magnet spheres. Nothing has the same dynamic tactile abilities that magnet spheres do and to say the appeal of magnets itself is a problem is entirely throwing out the baby with a bathwater. the harm of products can be categorized into three groups there are products that are meant to cause harm these guns. are like guns pepper spray brass knuckles tasers warships and most other products that come out of the military industrial complex there are products that may be reasonably expected to cause harm even if used responsibly alcohol tobacco trampolines skateboards atvs skis <laughs> snowboards things with warnings that say using this is inherently dangerous and then there are products that are only dangerous if misused. This is the category that every other product falls under, including magnet spheres. Anything can cause harm if misused. By forcefully insisting on a comprehensive ban instead of negotiating age labeling or collaborating on an educational campaign, this becomes no longer a legal discussion about safety. This is about the U.S. government's stance on whether or not art and education is a valid use for magnets, when it has no right to usurp the decision of usefulness from individuals in the first place. Having built a business on strong spherical magnets, we've seen firsthand that art and education are not only valid uses, but some of the best uses for magnets. Take this as official notice that Zen Magnets is going all in and taking door number two as described above. We will not settle for any sort of stop sale of magnets that are perfectly safe when not misused. The hearing is set for December and we are committed to taking this influential case to trial. We vow to continue this legal awareness and lobbying battle until our very last drop of cash flow blood. We will combat the CPSC's magnet prohibition until triumph or until a glorious death of insolvency on the legal battlefield. (laughs) At the very least we'll have one more holiday season of availability so if you want to go and hook yourself up with zen magnets i would recommend you go to zenmagnets.com 
com. And it's funny because, like I said before, like I've heard you do the commercial where you're doing the read about them, and you and you introduce him as like this personal hero of yeah. yours. And and it's not and it's not fully explained. You're just talking about these little magnets, and I'm like, well, right. why are the little magnets the hero of Ian Freeman who went to jail for his <laughs> beliefs and moved to Key, New Hampshire? Blah blah. blah. And it is. It's crazy. I can't believe that we're even having this discussion. Like yeah. I'm I'm now like going through my mind like the process of buying spherical magnets on Silk Road 2.0 with Bitcoin <laughs> and like going through all sorts of ridiculous hoops and steps to like have little magnetic balls on my desk. I mean, what is this world coming to? Well, you might want to get your Zen magnets uh, now while you still can. I mean, I hope he ultimately wins this thing. Yeah, but or- he's... He's putting a lot into this. He to, is. To thousands this fight. and thousands and of dollars you in know attorneys. What? No one is going to bear this cost but he. When he wins, a whole bunch of companies will rush into the marketplace with spherical balls that uh, you know that didn't put a penny towards this, and he's going to be the, he's fighting out there by himself. This truly is David and Goliath. And and but you know while he is by himself, you can help him by you know buying some magnets from this guy. And you looked at this set. I mean, it's a nice set. This is a gift set. It's got a nice velvety kind of bag. And what was this like unwrapping this uh, for you, Chris? It it, good. it it's you can tell it's a quality product. I mean, the magnets are very strong. It does it like you said. It comes in this little box, and inside the box is a bag, and behind the bag. Is this little magnetic plate that the magnets stick to and mm-hmm. and it was like it was in some nice shape before I started messing with it you know yeah. and it's and it seems like a great thing and it, I just it's it's so sick that we're we're getting to this point that it's now magnet magnets I thought like milk was bad like oh you can't have raw milk blah, blah, blah. and now they're like no you can't have magnets or milk or you, you know. get this now it'll be it may be contraband in another six months yeah I, it's 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 the sickest thing man to, to, to look at this happening Chris can't, thanks for coming in tonight Christopher thanks, Cantwell We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com and check out Zen Magnets. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.92 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,303 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $584. 
Politico reports the number of Americans who approve of their own representative in Congress has reached an all-time low, according to a new poll released on Tuesday. In a Washington Post ABC News poll, 51% of Americans said they disapprove of the way their own representative in Congress is handling his or her job. 41% approve of how their members handle his or her work, the lowest approval rating that the Washington Post and ABC News has ever found. This is the first time in 25 years that the number of Americans who disapprove of their own member of Congress has risen to more than 50%. Still, Democrats are seeing more favorable ratings than Republicans. Of those polled, 49% said they have a favorable impression of the Democratic Party, while only 35% answered the same for the GOP. These results come on the same day that voters in Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, and Washington will be casting ballots for midterm election primaries. On June 15th, a Gallup poll found that only 15% of Americans approve of the way that Congress as a whole is handling its job, with a plurality answering that the solution for fixing the legislative branch would be to clear the house. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Intercept reports nearly half of the people on the U.S. government's widely shared database of terrorist suspects are not connected to any known terrorist group, according to a classified government document obtained by The Intercept. Of the 680,000 people caught up in the government's terrorist screening database, a watch list of known or suspected terrorists that is shared with local law enforcement agencies, private contractors, and foreign governments, more than 40% are described by the government as having Having no recognized terrorist group affiliation. That category, 280,000 people, dwarfs the number of watch-listed people who are suspected with having ties of Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and Hezbollah combined. The documents obtained from a source in the intelligence community also revealed that the Obama administration has provided over an unprecedented expansion of the terrorist screening system. Since taking office, Obama has boosted the number of people on the no-fly list more than tenfold to an all-time high of 47,000 people, surpassing the number of people barred from flying under George W. Bush. David Gomez, a former senior FBI special agent, says if everything is terrorism, then nothing is terrorism. The classified documents were prepared by the National Counterterrorism Center, the lead agency for tracking individuals with suspected links to international terrorism. It was stamped secret and no foreign, indicating that they are not to be shared with foreign governments. They offer the most complete numerical picture of the watch-listed system to date. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to take Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty, while simultaneously continuing to create daily liberty media. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. Antiwar.com reports, the Israeli government has withdrawn its ground troops and the new ceasefire has taken effect and seems to be holding. So far, all cross-border attacks have been halted by both sides. The 72-hour truce opens up a window for negotiations on a peace settlement, and while Israel won't meet directly with the Palestinians on the matter, the Egyptian junta has agreed to act as mediator, ferrying messages back and forth between the two sides until a pact is reached. The return of calm, whether whether temporary or not, allows hundreds of thousands of displaced Gazans to return to their homes, or at least to the rubble that used to be their homes before the intense Israeli bombardment began. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. For over eight years, Gary Lightman has been the chief executive officer and guiding force behind tech company Media Merge Incorporated. Lightman spoke to reporters this week about working his way up from his humble beginnings as a son of the previous CEO. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would someday be the CEO of my dad's company, I would have said, absolutely not. I mean, it feels like just yesterday that I started